That is awesome. And we got a pretty good entry this week in, in the photographs for the uh, bottle stopper thing. That That's by Dane. Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah, I've seen that one on Facebook. Dane, yeah. I seen that uh, that one with the apple in the top of it, though, from uh, John Brown. Wow. Uh, Eddie, this is Gary in Oklahoma City. How do I, this be the first time I want to share anything. How do I go about that? Just let you know, or do I need to do something in the uh, comments? Oh, Gary, just uh, let us know when you get, when you do the gallery and we'll click it up. When I get to what again now? When I, when you, you have to text us that you want to do gallery. And when they get to you, I'll click it on and turn it on for you. Okay. So um, when we write it in the chat. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, I gotta get chat up and on, on running too. Hey, don't be afraid to talk amongst yourselves. I'm catching up on a little business in, in here. All right, I want to ask who's been who's been turning today? I did. Would you make Brenda? Um I made myself a new ink pen. Cool. Out of uh canary wood. I love canary wood. I do too. We lost our source for it down here. I gotta buy it online nowadays. This is it, my uh, first well, I don't have a click pen, I have the twist pens. This is my first one I ever made. The twist pin. But I wanted I wanted a click pin. And I made some keychains. And I worked on my look at this. Pretty. That's my uh honey locust. That I've worked on for months. I'll take that my opinions on my own and months too, and those are my institutions. Did nobody else turn today? Innovation has come from practicing doctors and creative doctors and research. In fact, we're on the right track. An early multi drug on treatment for COVID 19 clearly works. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dr. Mirror, I'm presenting you know, with you different evidences and voices out there. Um, and they're treating you like a teacher. I think I got it. If you'd like to, if you'd like to chat precious space bar like you do during the program, it keeps that background sound from coming through from somebody's television program. No, nobody turned today? I mean, beautiful day outside. Come on. Boy, this is going to go slow if y'all don't talk. I guess I was the only one, Eddie. Wow. I'm jealous, Brenda. <laughs> I uh, salvaged a limb from a ice storm we had about a month ago, just devastated Oklahoma City. 
but uh, it was green wood. I turned a snowman just to practice. Good. That you know that that's when you do the practice, even just tool practice, you get so much better. This is what it came out of. Another piece like this. It was uh, from the neighbor across the street. My trees survived, thankfully, but uh, most of the trees in town didn't. An awful lot of loss. So, but when I carved this or turned this this morning, you could just almost feel the moisture in the outer layers. But it was cheap, inexpensive wood right now for me to practice on. Yeah. Good evening. Hey, Donald, how are you? I'm real good. Uh, lovely day here today. 24 degrees. Wow. I'm not jealous of that. My goodness. <laughs> okay, whoever's identified as owner, go in and change the name on your on account and put your put a name we can work with. <laughs> we don't like the generics. And by the way, we'll start this early. We're getting a fantastic turn on for folks that want to get their location tag going. Uh, David's uh, with Preston City's website. Uh, website manager can get it on there. So we uh, live that in the chat. David get, David get to them and put them up there. Somebody brought their radio back on or the TV back on, but I got that precious space bar if you like to chat. Hey, Donald, when you said 24 degrees, that's Celsius or Fahrenheit? Yeah, that's Celsius. <clears throat> Somebody okay. do the quick crossover. What is that? We're talking about Twenty-four degrees Celsius to seventy-five point two Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. <laughs> I got one of those gizmos on my on my uh, pocket phone. I'm not that good at it to guess. I don't do math. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was highly overrated in school. I've seen some good pictures of Miss Kim Tippin's work this week. Uh, welcome aboard, Kim. Very nice to see you tonight. From right last week, she was cooking and couldn't oh. stay with us. So should we ask this? E Oops. So should we ask this evening if anyone has a suggestion for an alternate name for, of course, or shall we go with the, the name of uh, Turning Point, since that's the name of the magazine? All I've gotten this week is just that. Don't, don't go to too many name changes, because <clears throat> they said we're all old, and that's hard to do. They said what? We're all old, and that's hard to do. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Somebody's yeah, I would, agree. I would agree. Uh, keeping names the same across the across every all the platforms is probably a better idea. And and hey, everybody, wanna... help! Hey, hey. Who said hi? I did. Well, hey, I'm everybody. willing to switch it to anything. I know that the uh, uh, the uh, YouTube name. Uh, of course, it's kind of a silly one. I'm just really bad at coming up with names. I have cats and they all have ridiculous names. <laughs> hey, 
always feel bad when parents have more than one kid. Which one do they pick on? Uh, <laughs> the oldest. <laughs> okay, we, we, we we're talking about if you weren't aware, and let's catch you up because there's no secrets here. Um, Dave posts information on a website on or a channel on YouTube, and what he does is post our meetings, and in separate post, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, he takes the demonstration part of the meeting and also posts it. So if you missed the demonstration, you want to see it again, you can go to our YouTube site when Dave manages and catch it all over again. Exactly. And, and I'll pull out more sections if anybody wants to make a comment that such and such a section of the meeting should come out and be set separate. I'm just kind of at the moment doing maybe two a week because we have two demos or one demo and I'll put one out. And I'm kind of afraid to tear out hundreds of little ones because we got 30 second chunks that are fantastic, but I don't want the 430 second little chunks to make it easier. So at the moment, if it's about 30 minutes or longer, I'm uh, pulling it out and saying, ah, I need to watch that two dozen times and I don't want to go through the whole meeting every time I get to it. I know I did that with shearing and uh, and scraping last week because I wanted to watch it over and over again because I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's a good one. He did a very nice job explaining that. It really was. Uh, I'm a great fan of scraping before sanding um, or in lieu of sanding. I, re I really am. I, I don't mind sandpaper, but I believe you can't go to shape and you can't go to finish just with sandpaper. Oh. There you go. Well, I'm trying to take your advice and I'm trying to make sure that every time I do a cut, it is the best I can do. But I'm so new that most of them require enough sanding that I could sand my arm off before I'm done. So I'm working I'm, on it. <laughs> I understand. And you know, it is all about the slice. If you tear it up, if you, I use the term, if you plow it up, it's, it's still plowed up. Uh huh. I've seen some beautiful work with lost grain finishes that just steals away from the look. Yeah. Well, I haven't even been trying to do objects, so to speak. I've been taking chunks of wood and doing nothing out there but standing at the uh, lathe and letting it turn and trying to adjust my angles so that eventually I'll cut across it once and look, I'm not going to say perfect. I'll say good. <laughs> I'm getting closer. I'm getting pretty close. Good. What you know, I found when I was trying to learn how tools worked was to have somebody turn the wheel of my lathe for me because uh, I had a, I had a mini and I couldn't make it go slower. And I watch how it cut. That's how I learned in wood turning, uh, woodworking, is find out how that tool cuts and then work towards that. That sounds like a good idea. And I've decided I'm definitely going to cut a bottle stopper this month, but. Uh because I missed the uh, ornaments last month, but that was because I spent the entire month working on trying to figure out how the heck to use the lathe. I'm sorry, I'm a real novice. Well, Maybe a slow well, learner. <laughs> we welcome you, sir. We welcome you. Um, we get a lot of photographs on bottle stoppers. And I had one or two emails this week that asked me, which were asking me, what will we do for the next challenge after the first of the year? And I'm going to ask the input for the members. What, where, where do you think we should go? Remember, this is a skill builder. It's not a challenge. It's a skill builder. What can we build? What can we do? So if you have an idea, let us know. Uh, if you're coming on in under a alias tonight, like your iPhone or your um uh, any other name, will you please go in and change your name so we know who we're chatting with when we click up on you? And by the way, when Dane takes over and does the gallery, he won't know who you are or where you are if you have that weird name on there. 
Not that your name is weird, but Dane's got to be able to find you when we do the, the challenge. I mean, at the gallery. And that's why we do that. And speaking of Dane, he just signed in. Howdy, y'all. How you doing, sir? I need to find you because I got to get you lit up here. Hello, Dane. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Keep him busy. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah. usual. Yeah. Getting silly requests in now. Yeah, I like what? Oh, just just absurd timelines to get something made before Christmas. Oh yeah, I cut my Christmas orders off like two weeks ago. Yeah, I got I got my primary ones. I, I mailed my last one out on Friday, I think. But uh, yeah, I've been getting some silly, silly questions and requests here lately, and then wanting to pay next to nothing for it. Yeah, it's amazing how they don't know how much time and effort goes into certain yeah. items, <clears throat> like that pill bottle right there. Yeah, I'd like to get five of them. <laughs> but, I don't, but I only want to pay $10 for it. I don't want them for different all. colors. And they want them tomorrow, right? No. Uh, no, last night. <laughs> hey, all y'all. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, Butter. Hi, Matt. <laughs> Who's betting on how I'd, our first oh, session uh, tonight? Uh, I think you'll have a Santa hat on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Santa hat and the elf hat's going to be on the way. Somebody's supposed to make them some, uh, some earrings for Christmas. You need to figure out no the angry ones. Do I that just found his picture. Man. I found Doug's picture on my phone. I took a picture of him in a dress. I still can't get out of my head. <laughs> yeah, you really don't want it in there, man. <laughs> I almost sent it to you because I made it a favor so I could find it. <laughs> I think we. I think we should just call him Clinger. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know it's <laughs> 70 degrees in my shop, right, Matt? Ouch. Yeah, it's 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 48, and it's the That's highest true. I've been able to get it all day. <laughs> that sucks. I, think I, oh, I got shorts on. <laughs> yeah, well, I, got you at? I don't have any bugs. <laughs> I, I have heating in the air conditioning. I don't have any bugs either. I've got a heater. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got a heater too, but it's it's just not working. I'm going to have to work it, try to get. There's 120,000 BTUs and it eats three different fuels. <laughs> there you go. You know, I found a, a halogen light like you would use outside. Works really great when you shop in the wintertime. It's like nice and toasty and nice and dry. Interesting. Heat machine. You get a tan from it? <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't get it that close, but it, it really does a good job of taking the humidity out of the air. The humidity. <laughs> a long time ago, I tried one of those propane heaters in the shop. It was really cold, and a little bit halfway through the day, I realized I was melting my jacket. <laughs> we, we leave it outside now. Yeah, and yeah, those ventless ones are always—they uh, stink. You know, I mean, they just have an odor. I don't care what they say. So I had two of them in my uh, garage before I did this heating and air conditioner. So, well, I got I got to turn some green wood today for the first time. I got some elm, and it turned out really nice. I've been doing some microwave uh, drying technique, and that's the first time for that too. Cool. Yeah, I, I Elm Elm is sure pretty. I, I I don't get it so much anymore, but uh, I love it. it. It's it's very pretty. If you get it, 
if you get it sanded really well, uh, the elm I've, I've turned up here has, has had like little striations in between the yearly growth rings. Really pretty. This is this has got some red streaking in it. It's really I don't know what's cause causes it, but I don't know if that's normal. But it's beautiful. I got a piece of elm I turned finished up yesterday, and it's it's pretty wood. Yep. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice when it spots. Yeah, yep. I wonder if the I wonder if the ambrosia beetle got lost and jumped inside your elm. <laughs> is that the one that makes the is that the one that makes the red box elder or is that something else? No, no, no. The the bo the, the red in the box elder is it's a it's a uh, a fungus that grows in the box elder. Yeah. Fungus um, among us. Yeah, the fungus among us. So and it's only it's only in the female trees. Wow. There was a mention a moment ago about microwave drying of green wood. If somebody could explain that tonight, that would be appreciated because the item I was going to show that I turned today, this was wood that came down in the ice storm a month ago. And I have a, uh, in my face, in my Facebook notes, Gary, uh, I don't know if you can still get to it. Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, message oh. me and I'll send, and I'll send a link to it. But I wrote up my entire microwave drying process. Um, short answer is a couple of caveats. Don't use the microwave in your kitchen. Your wife will never, ever forgive you. Um, your significant other yeah whoever's in the house will never forgive you for it uh number option number uh, caveat number two is you can set pieces on fire in the microwave so sure. be be really careful what you microwave and and watch it um when i microwave i microwave at 50 percent power i never microwave at 100 percent power always at 50 percent depending on how wet the wood is you, my process is usually i i will rough turn to about uh, an inch or three quarters inch in diameter, leave the tenon on, if it's a bowl or a vase, for instance, and put it in a brown paper bag and close up the paper bag. Some people put shavings in with the paper bag. The purpose of the paper bag is to regulate how the moisture comes out of the wood. Um, and so depending on how wet the wood is, if it's sopping wet, I might start microwaving at seven minutes for 50% power, if it's a decent sized piece full-size piece, full-size bowl, say. Uh, if it's a small piece, I might start at four minutes at 50% power or three minutes. Just to, so, and, and you have to take it out and let it cool, take it out of the paper bag and let it cool before you do it again. Um, and the whole thing is, is you keep doing that over and over again until the bag is dry to the touch when you take it out of the microwave. Um, other people weigh it. Other people use moisture meters. If you're going to use a moisture meter, you got to wait till the piece is cooled down to room temperature to get an accurate reading. And that's it in a nutshell. You do it till the bag's dry. Or uh, I have, a, I have a, a cheap moisture meter I bought from Harbor Freight. Uh, when that hits below 9% 9, 9 or below, I consider the piece dry and, and dry for turning. And the only other thing I do is, is that if micro cracks start appearing in the piece, at any point in the drying, I hit it with thin super glue. And if I've already got something churned, uh, can it still be dried to some extent to help? Yeah, um, you're, it's 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 you know it's going to change. It's going to warp, right? It's going to move probably. Okay, as it dries, if it's still wet. Um, uh, if I if I've got that something turned really thin like the goblets i turn i turn them most of almost the entire goblet is like less than a quarter inch thick okay yeah. then i just let it dry in the shop i don't even put it in the microwave um uh, this was just a log that uh, was green and i was experimenting on dimensions and how it's going to come out and everything like that so if it cracks and busts in half no loss <laughs> okay. but, it, but still it was fun to do and uh because i want to do it for my granddaughter uh something like this for a christmas ornament so that's what i'm working on and uh, this is the first try all right well good luck thank you i hope i uh, hope that little process Ooh. helps uh. hey paul hey paul Jeff, you going to have a safety tip tonight? 
Oh yeah. I I, I prepare all week all along. <laughs> yeah, don't set your shop on fire with your microwave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that happen in Alaska. I was uh, I forget what I was microwaving. All of a sudden, it started making all kinds of sparky noises. By the time I pulled it out of the wall and threw it outside, it was on fire. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, oh, it wasn't man. what was inside. It was the electronic part went on fire. I'm like, okay. So I'm glad I just didn't let shut it off and let it sit. So. Yeah. The, uh, uh, you got to, you know, if you've got metal, you know, like you've got a buried nail in a piece of wood and you put it in the microwave, that's, that's a trouble spot. Uh, the one that I, I only had one piece catch on fire doing that, and it was a small uh, little hollow form I was turning, and it had a cavity inside the wood that I didn't know was there. And that cavity, the wood around it dried up really quick, apparently, in the microwave. This is my guessing about what happened. And the air inside that cavity was heated up so hot that it caught the surrounding wood on fire. I smelled it before you know, and I didn't know where the fire had been until I turned it thinner and found where it had, where the fire had been and found the cavity oh. inside the wood. When, when I tried the microwave, I had a pitch pocket that boiled when it was in the microwave and it was turned to the outside edge and it boiled out and went all over the outside of the piece. Um, I hadn't had a finish on it yet. Interesting. I got a good safety thing. Uh, I was thinking about it last week when he was talking. I worked in aviation for 33 years, and we always had a saying, all the way on or all the way off, no in between. And I've, and I've caught myself a couple of times in the middle of doing something going, don't leave the freaking chuck key in the chuck. Don't put the piece of wood unless it's completely tightened down. And, you know, and, and that's always kept me out of trouble. That's good. Got a knob, it's always good to check and see what the torque feels like on them before you spin it up and put a tool through the wood. Make sure everything is tight up on the blade head with the head stop, the tail stop. Uh, that was, you know, we're not here to intimidate people. I mean, okay, I mean, we want to hear what you're going on in the background. I think we caught it, but yep. I put a riser block today on my bandsaw so I can actually do some uh, cutting some bow blanks out. And I, it, it, it went really well. I've cut some 16 inch uh, bow blanks from uh, from the elm I got. And I was really impressed with uh, how well my little circle cutting jig worked. Good, but you have to keep in mind on that is the, the blade has to be able to handle that, that rise. Um, Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a three tooth blade. I mean, I got the best blade I could get to do the job, and just not, I'm not in a hurry. You know, that's the main thing. I don't, I don't push it. Yeah, I get mine made at Southern Saw here in Harahan, or near, near Harahan. It works out fine for me. I change, make some changes. All right. What else? I know Ronnie's in there tonight. Ronnie, you with us? I uh, sure am. Good, e good evening, everybody. Everybody was talking, so I was just laying back. It looks like Eddie's got his overcoat on. And that's my animal. That's my animal. It's a, my neck is cold, and uh, uh, I can't afford to get a, a, a any soreness right now. A little, probably a little thing going on. I want to see if this go. comes up. This is what Ronnie's been working on. Look at these things, guys. Wow. Yeah. Nice. About that. Ronnie said, Very nice. All of that's two by fours, fellas. No way. <laughs> really? Sweet. They're not what you down two. with? I was, huh? They're not two by twos, that's two by fours? Well, you start off with two by fours <laughs> and, and split them. I was going to turn, turn them mm -hmm. out of something else or a hardwood and I was going to turn it out of spectra ply and shit. I, I picked up on a two by four to do a, a test on it and it worked so good and it died nice. So uh, I just stayed with that. It looks great. So you died on them, huh? 
What'd you die with, Ronnie? What's that? What'd you die with? Uh, the uh, Audison die. Cool. And uh, while while we're talking about this, Eddie Eddie and I were discussing it, and Eddie put me on a a little a little hit, uh, trick. When you go to drill uh, drill the center to tap it. At first, I tried to twist drill, and it kept walking on me. So Eddie and I got together and we started talking about it. And for a three-eighth uh, uh, tap, they want you to drill at five sixteenths, which five sixteenths is kind of big. You, so I stepped it down one size, but it but it was walking. So. The, the bottom line is I took a Foster bit, a quarter inch Foster bit, and I drilled it. And then I came back with the twist drill and never had no, no problems at all. And then I uh, put some CA on it and then came back and tapped it. And it, it was fine. So uh, if anybody's trying to drill something and you see that twist drill bit walking on you, it's a good idea to pick up a Foster bit and drill it smaller and come back with the size that you want. Foster bit also gives you a clean entry cut too. It does, it does. But yeah, I got to tell, I got to say this now. Ronnie is right up on the top of the Worldwide Wood Turners two by four turning team. Um, <laughs> I use a I use a short uh, five sixteenths Brad Brad point drill. And uh, there's no flex to that. Of course, you can only drill about an inch, inch and a half with it, but it works great for uh, handles like that. Uh -huh. Those, yeah, I, the Brad Point drills, when I was drilling, when, I haven't made pens in a while, but you use Brad Point drills to drill those. You get good, good clean cuts with those too. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. I tell you what, those old twist drills, they'll, they'll walk on you easy. Many times, if you start with a center drill, you're better off. Try that. And, and look, when you say center drill, you mean like a Brad or a Forstner? No, I mean the ones that the uh, metal metal guys use. The the metal workers when they use a center drill. Yeah, I bought a center drill. You like them? Okay, we get a lot of visitors. Wow, what are we up to now, right now? 73. To 73. Yeah. We won't see Johnny uh, used tonight. Johnny um, is taking a night off and spending it in the hospital. So we'll see Johnny next week. He'll be doing better. Uh, but we're hearing from, I, know, I see Kim is there. Matt's there. Doug's there. Dane's there. All the other co-host and remember you can be a co-host nothing special it's just to help us put the program on i gotta get the light better all right and tone it down a little bit how's that all right that's better i look good there um we started talking doing a pardon me but i wouldn't go that far i didn't think you would i, I remember what you did with me with the microphone it's okay i remember that uh Earlier, we were talking with, with Dave, who's our uh, webmaster, uh, about uh, last week, we asked about people give suggestions for a name for our YouTube site where Dave is putting up the, the entire program for you to go to YouTube and see it. Uh, the, an excerpt of the demonstration, unless the demonstrator says we can't do it, um, we put the demonstration up. So if you miss something, you want to go back and visit it, you'll know where to find it on YouTube and you can subscribe to that channel. No money involved. Subscribe and then you go back and get it again. Right now, the leading name is Turning Point. If you've got a suggestion for another one, we want to hear about it. Um, we've got a couple of folks like your scoops there, Ronnie. I see that. Um uh, and uh, I tell you what, 
it's about 20 minutes before the hour. I'm going to pop over now and check with Jeff. Uh, or Jeff, you can jump in here when you're ready. I think you got a safety moment for us tonight, don't you? Yes, I do, Eddie. <clears throat> All right. What, and what would that be, sir? It looks like Martin. <laughs> You've got me, Eddie. Like, just like Martin. There we go. <laughs> Yep. Um, well, the first part is uh, beware of what uh, we call the red zone or the firing zone. When things are spinning, when you first turn them on, and even when you turn them off, be careful and standing right in front of them. Uh, you hear so many people when they first turn on, all of a sudden the wood splits apart, the holding method breaks, uh, you hear crack, listen to things, you know, use your ears and your eyes possibly, start seeing something flap around, get out of the way. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I've heard where, oh, People were just in there watching. They took their mask off, so boom, it blew off. Uh, there was a young lady that got hurt really bad, a lot of surgeries. Uh, all she was doing, looking at pizza, all of a sudden it exploded and hit her in her face. Um, you know, and then um, the other part of that, um, you know, use slower speeds for bigger stuff until things start, you know, when they're not balanced. Uh, higher speeds for smaller pieces. Um, you know, be careful uh, when you turn your, your, you know, be careful of what your speed of your lathe is before you go turning it on. You know, if you have variable speed, don't make sure that you didn't turn something fast before, put a new piece on or some boom, go hit it on and not realize what the speed's at. And all of a sudden this thing comes flying out because it wasn't balanced. So be careful out there. Uh, your face, you know, with these bones off here is like eggshells. They break very easy. I know that for a fact. But that's it for me. And DB, please turn safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that safety moment. Um, I've seen professionals blow a bowl up by not knowing how the speed worked on the lake. They'll come in and turn it for a club and they'll reach up and, you know, everybody knows when you turn this way, it's going to go faster. Uh, but the bowl was just, it was thin and it blew up. Um, and I, I used to joke about a guy in a club I belong to. Um, he sat in the front row, center chair, every meeting for 15 years. He got hit more times from stuff coming off, from bowling, from uh, rolling pins to ink pens to ball, bowls to balls. Um, and he was always in the firing line, and he wanted that front row seat. <laughs> Sometimes you got to pay for it. Uh, we have a special demonstration night by Matt Harbour is going to give us one this evening. Um, and we'll get to that right at seven o'clock. Um, and we've got, oh, we're collecting photos. We've showed you, I have shown you tonight, you've seen some photographs of uh, bottle stoppers that are, we're turning now. That, that doesn't mean you can't sell me photograph, send me photographs of bowls, platters, plates, ink pens, uh, Christmas ornaments, anything, if you turn it, Send the club your photograph. We put it in newsletter. We put it on the website. We put it right here on the program, the show folks. This is to get you thinking about what you can do at your lathe. There's no bragging. It's, you know, we got, the, this guy did this piece. And we just, we saw a beautiful uh, piece on here tonight by uh, a bottle stopper with the hidden pill. I call it the hidden pill. Uh, it's got a little cap that goes over it when you put the aspirin for tomorrow when you drink all that wine. Um, that was done by Dane. Uh, we had one come in, my, Mr. Brown, tonight. Really quality work. And we've seen some absolutely gorgeous Christmas ornaments this year. And that all gets recycled so we can show you. And also, we're looking for a project for the first of the year. And that's only, what, 28 days away? Yeah, that's the good news. 2020 is going to end in 28 days. Um, but we're looking for a project. And like a suggestion... Will you put it in the chat? I'll point it over here because that's where my chat is. If you point, put it in chat, we'll, we'll look at it, see what we can do. Uh, sometimes, well, a lot of times, you folks have got ideas we don't get around to and, and I, I, the ways that we can improve and grow. And really, it's developed technique and talents. Um, some of the Christmas ornaments we saw this year used... Charlie says it's 29 days. Charlie, don't stretch it out. I'm going with 28. Um, we've seen some fantastic techniques put into these Christmas ornaments. And we talk every week about finishing and improvement, sanding and, and cutting. 
and, and, and stuff. So that's what we're here for is to talk wood turning and get it done. I'd love to, I'd love to have you input on that. Um, Brenda says her website is called The Turning Point. That's her website. We're looking for a name for our YouTube channel. Um, and we are still collecting freedom pens. Who just said they're going to start turning? Turning pens, pardon me. Um, wow, I just got another picture of two by fours. Um, somebody said they're going to turn pens, but we're still collecting freedom pens. And Doug Rowe does that, the sergeant. Our first sergeant takes care of that for us. And if you've got a pen to send to him, put it in the chat to contact. When Doug comes on this evening, he'll see your name and he'll put up his address where you can mail it to and send the pens directly to Doug. Doug gets them right in the troops' hands. It's not, it's not fiddle faddle or anything. Right in the hands of the people that are protecting our freedom. That's important. You want to do that, especially for the holidays. Still got plenty of time to get them pens. Um, had one more thing pop up a second ago. It's going, we're looking for demos. That's what it's on top of my list. I need to see it. Uh, if you'd like to do a demo for this club, it's your club. You can do a demo. You can do it live on the air with your, 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 uh, zoom account. You can put it on, um, a, a, a um, MOV4 or get a hold of us, we'll figure out, if you tape it, we'll figure out how to get to it. But um, it's, demos share a lot of ideas. And it, in the past, we've had guys pop up, guy, turners, I say guys, I meant turners, pop up with some great ideas. And one of the ones we're collecting right now are ideas on how to store tools. I got five or six photographs this week from people giving me, given us all an idea how to store our tools. We're looking for that. Uh, Doug Rowe in Arizona put his phone number up on chat tonight. Oh, if you see this on chat and you want to save it, you can just click the little three button thing, the little three dots in the square, and you can save the chat. Warning, if you save it now, you'll have to save it later if stuff adds to it. And if you're the dummy, that forgets to save it, you wait a couple of days and it'll be on our website, which is worldwidewoodturners.org. And Dave does a great job. I, we're running it, we're in the top running for the best website for wood turners in the world right now. And that's because of your input and what you wanna see. So we got any gallery popping in here before we go to the demonstration? Well, we got, we got one gallery item and we got one jig item. So let's go to Go to the great state of Kentucky. Kentucky. Our old buddy, Doug Miller. Doug's been at it again? Yes, he has. And there he is. Show us, Doug. All right. I, I stay at it. You know that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is a piece of uh, red heart. Let's see if I can get where the light's better on it. Um, that is uh, three and a half inches in diameter, two and a half inches tall. Um, if I set it down i can show you the inside there we go just a nice little bowl but then with a lid on it so that it, it makes a, a real nice presentation box oh wait 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 that, hold on doug. hold on doug i gotta ask this yes. is anybody okay. else seeing doug Do what are y'all seeing doug's picture no yes, i yes, can't I see him yes yeah, I, I see him, him. i'm sorry i don't I see him. Him. just see you eddie uh, Doug, is, Doug, is is <laughs> Doug is spotlighted. I see him. Okay. I, see him. Doug. I see him. All right. Uh, lid is uh, not flat across the top. You can see just a little, little bit of uh, profile there. Of course, my normal smooth bottom with three rings and my signature on there. So that red heart is a uh, nice hardwood, polishes up very nicely very easily there's no lacquer on there that's just a bit of wax is all there is on there that's nice Doug. i like i like made the for a nice piece. very every year very nice, nice. Doug. beautiful got a lotion thank you all very much really pop really yeah pops. good job yeah, nice chitoyance right there 
Yeah. Yep. My wife would like and me then, to put the three in rings, The three <laughs> rings look really nice. Odd numbers uh, make it easier, right? Yes, yes. Yep. Perfect. <clears throat> Something about that three rings, it, it just, uh, the odd number looks better than an even number every time. Yeah, it's hard to make even numbers even, but odd numbers look great. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Sounds like a cone of wisdom there. Okay. All right, so Doug, what so what's say. your secret to getting your three rings evenly spaced? Um, a good eye. Okay. <laughs> the, the right I one do or not the measure one? them. Okay. <laughs> I do not. I do not measure. I, I what I will typically do is do the center one first, and then come out, and then the third one is always the hardest, of course. Um, trying to get it evenly spaced. Looks great. Well, you do a good job at it. Thanks, I'm guys. Guys, modify saw blades. Uh, save a saw blades. Take a, a point out in the middle or whatever to do it, but then it didn't always work out. Uh oh, first sergeant's up. Hey, hey, all right, so I, I didn't see yet. Is, is Doug Moore on? Doug Miller? No, Doug Moore. Did Doug Moore come on? Yeah, Bar I'm on. Yes, he's in. Okay, so we have to blame it first. So Why are we blaming me? Here's what happened worldwide with Turners. I watch this thing a lot called YouTube. Maybe you guys are familiar with it. Mm. Doug Moore, Full Bar, he's got a pretty good channel. So there he is making a pedestal bowl. Wife and I are sitting in the hot tub watching it. <laughs> Turns this out he's funny. making it out of uh, bird resin. Bird resin is that resin that takes flight off of the lake. So at any <laughs> rate, there goes his bowl. My wife yells, oh, and then we're not allowed to cuss in this program. So you can finish that word yourself. I think the neighbors heard it. She yelled it so loud. At any rate, then, you know, I told you last week, I was planning on making a bowl for my mom for Christmas. So my wife says, I really like that shape. Make something like that. Yes, dear. So there I am making a pedestal lidded bowl. Who knew I was making it out of bird wood? It also took flight. So I blame Doug Moore for that. But at any rate, I was able to find the pieces, glue it back together. Uh, so there's the ZZ Top Farm Aid concert on top. Also <laughs> as a nativity scene. Uh, the grain did line up and pops off Whoa. and the uh pedestal so <laughs> the two disasters now this first one's not doug's fault it just happened i'd gotten a pretty bad chip out right in here found that piece on the ground or i couldn't find that piece on the ground so with packing tape on this bowl separating the ridge of the lid I was able to fill that back in with sawdust and CA glue so it looks like a triangle of particle board in there now whatever but the uh my mortise is where it broke loose in two different spots and I was able to find those on the floor and glue them back on secure it with a rubber band let it dry and then finish the bowl so anyways but that's none, that none of those most, were my most fault. most important question doug is your wife happy with it yeah 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 and it's that one's going to my mom anyway so we're good now the next one is going to be for my mother-in-law my wife's mom um so i'd found this little jewish star thing at the thrift store so we picked it up it's transparent so i'm going to work that into my mom my mother-in-law loves the colored pencil stuff so the blank is all glued up already um, I've already got the hill, hole drilled for the wormhole. So the idea, hopefully I have this done by next Wednesday to show you guys, is it's going to be a lidded bowl, but instead of accidentally making a funnel out of a bowl, the idea is to actually make a funnel with a little ridge where I can then set that in as the lid, and then you'll be able to look down into the bowl because that's transparent, and then it'll be pencils all on the outside. That's the plan. We'll see if it works or not. Yeah. But if you guys haven't seen Doug Moore's video yet, go watch it. And if you cuss out loud when you see that thing take flight, hey, I warned you. Hey, and if you all want the other version of that story he just told, I will forward it to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's all I got for that. I saw the finished piece, Doug. It looks like you survived it. 
<laughs> yes, it was a gorgeous piece. Is Gary in Oklahoma got a gallery? Is that what I saw? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this summer, I I don't know about the if you can see it very well lighting wise. I did two salt and pepper grinders, and my sister says I want an all white one for uh, salt. So that's what I did this weekend, and uh, well, I don't know about the light. Anyway, so that's that's that. And then today, I went out and got a piece of uh, wood from uh, uh, the uh, ice storm that Oklahoma City had uh, about a month ago, where everybody just about lost all their trees. And I did a snowman out of the wood. And that's where this is my first attempt. Yeah, gum. Good, right there. Well, yeah, but you can't see the wood really that much. I don't know what kind of wood it is. It was just green wood, and it was my first attempt to to do a snowman, so that I can get my sizes and everything else. Because I want to do one for my granddaughter for a Christmas ornament. So that's what I've been doing. I'm just a very rank amateur enjoying it. great i'm great glad snowman looks great congratulations yeah, good job yeah it it was green wood so i might try the microwave a little bit to dry it out but if it cracks so what it i'll cracks. either fix it or give it to her or i plan on probably making another one or two of them maybe a little bit smaller so that it can actually hang it's not too heavy but Still, you know, to hang on a Christmas tree, because I gave her an ornament last year that uh, I actually printed on a a uh, uh, a 3D printer. That was her first birthday or first Christmas, and this will be her second Christmas. So I want to do an ornament for her for that also, just as a tradition. That's right. a nice way to do it, Bud. Really Thank is. You. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. It's beautiful work. Hey, Gary, a quick way to, to lighten that up, if you want to make it hang on the tree, you can drill it out from the bottom, remove some material, and then put a plug in there. And that'll also help it dry out a little quicker. Yeah, I could go in there with uh, probably about a half-inch Forstner bit and go three-quarters of the way up. Nice thought. Yeah, yeah roll up a $100 bill and put it in the center. <laughs> I really <laughs> thought Doug was going to do it. I thought hey, I'm just saying, nice. if you're putting hundred dollar bills in your ornaments, my address is in the chat. Include that with the pens. You know, I'll donate it to a troop named Doug. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought Doug was going to tell him drill a hole and fill it with air. <laughs> it'll help. Or, it'll well, go to his helium. tool fund. Yeah, if you can grab some helium, put that in there. That'll really help. <laughs> All right, very good, Gary. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Mark Keith has something he wants to share. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Mark, we got you. You got us. So hello, far. everyone. Hi there. Um, hello there. Like I said last week, um, hello, everybody. Uh, I live in Nevada, always scrounging for wood wherever I can to do what I can with it. Um, I found this at the at the dollar store. It's a, uh, a little kid's block game, and it has a uh, some stained wood in it with little pieces. And I thought, hey, making an ornament or something, I thought I, I could do that. I created a, a, a laminate of it. And I thought maybe turn in that. For $1.10, uh, if it falls apart, it falls apart. But like I said, I'm always looking for some wood or something to, to be able to turn around or I could even cast it in resin or whatever. Um, Mark, can I throw I thought, uh, Yeah, go ahead. Can I throw two cents out there? You created a yeah, Okay, uh, squares are hard to get started. So if you can knock sure. those corners off, make it eight sided, you'll find it. Yeah. Be, you'll let you'll impact less presence to the wood, and the blow up is going to be lower. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you very much. And I learned that blow up trick from Doug. <laughs> hey, right. that thing explodes on you. You know what you're supposed to say, right? Jenga. <laughs> Jenga. <laughs> there goes all over. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. You, you, you bring up a good point about that. The wooden cheap, a lot of the secondhand stores, people were buying wooden um, chopping blocks or, or old uh, knife stands. 
you know, some of that wood, yeah. you can make some nice stuff out of it. So good idea. Thank you, guys. Thank Hi, you. Brenda. Who's that next? Hello, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi, guys. So you remember the uh, honey locust I had that was too big for my lathe? And I started turning it outboard? Yes. And you yep. worried about that? Well, it got small. Ooh, nice. Design change. That's all. It's not all that That's small. completely done. That's beautiful. I some uh, shellac, no, polyurethane on it. And it needs um, sanded down again a little bit. I think to improve the looks, you take that steel thing off the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ain't done yet. <laughs> but I just Ooh. love this yellow in here. I never knew honey locust had yellow in it. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. And it then on the other yellow. side, you can almost see some pink even. That's pretty. It. It's pretty wood. Yeah. So it's almost done. And I might right. have to keep it. <laughs> I like that. I very like nice, it. Brenda. What was that? I, I said very nice. Ah, thanks, Ronnie. And we hear from uh, Kim. She can't see it. Thanks. Kim said you his you No, know, this week it was me and Doug Moore that had stuff fly off the lathe. So I think next week it's back to your turn again. Yes, I was I was noticing that. I'm glad it's somebody besides me. And actually, you know what? Come think of it, this one did hit the floor again, too. <laughs> I was just happy I, I caught it on film when it flew off the lathe. There you go. I guess the other thing, why did it fly off the lathe? Do we know? Well, for mine, it was my mortise broke. Mine was my tools were dull and I was trying to force that final cut to go sharpen it and I was pushing too hard. <laughs> okay. I pushed it right out of the chuck. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great learning point. Yeah, I knew it needed to be sharpened and I just, I'm going to finish the cut and lean down a little too hard. <laughs> I thought I was going to die when I saw it. <laughs> we all learned that last cut thing. Sharpen up one more time. That must be an must have been an epic fly. I'm gonna to have to go watch it, Doug. Uh, yep. No, it's the, it's that you go from super speed to normal time. So it's like bang, 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 and then I slow it down so you can watch it in slow mo. But it's right. like it scares the hell out of you when it comes off there. <laughs> right. All Happens right. To everybody. Yeah. All right. Before we continue on this evening, because we got a demonstration coming up and more more gallery and more to chat about wood turning. That's what we do. I want to kind of do the opening because. Uh, we have new turners joining us every week. Welcome. Uh, this is your turning club. And we really mean that we say it. Uh, we get together to talk wood turning. We don't have any sponsors. We really avoid promoting products uh, because I don't want to be, I don't want to become aligned with, uh, you have to use Kenny's tools or Roy's tools or whatever to get it done right. No, you don't. You need the talent that God gave you and the things that's inside of you to make work. So regardless what tools you're using, what lathe you're using, what kind of wood you're using, the art is in here. If you can see it and you can feel it, go for it. And if we can help you any way whatsoever, you can put it in the chat if you don't feel like talking about it or you're embarrassed or you think, I'm not going to ask a stupid question. Guess what? That's the only good questions in the world. Uh, so ask them. Let us know what you want to have. And if you've got something that you want to be involved with in the demonstration, showing us a piece. Hey, it's right here. We're here every week and we do just that. So with that, we're starting the meeting. Is Matt with us tonight? And is he ready? He's with us. I know he's with us. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Can I spotlight Matt? myself. Yeah, go ahead. Spotlight is up. You're there you good. go, Matt. There you're you're on right. center screen, sir. At 48 degrees, you're cooking. Yeah, it's still 48 despite the heat. Um, okay. Uh, last week at the tail end of the meeting, uh, I was asked to, uh, to show a demonstration of how to turn uh, a bowl from the log. So what I've got here is I've got a couple pieces of, of this is birch. Okay, this is a birch log. And I've got another piece of it that I cut in half. Okay. And the pith, I think the pith is in there, but we'll probably be down below it. So um, I, I do another demonstration where I show how to alter the, uh, 
the angle that you start uh, a natural edge piece off to give you an asymmetric edge. So I'm gonna sort of combine that demo with this demo and use the graphic from it to show my shape. And, and, and I'm gonna offset this a little bit to try to get an asymmetric edge on it too. And we'll see how it goes. Now, because it's birch, and I don't intend to super glue it in the demo, um, it's likely I may not keep all the bark on it. Um, but I'm gonna cut to my little, my little bowl orientation adjustments. This is one of the pieces that I've turned. Um, it, it is a natural edge piece with a little bit of an offset uh, to, the, to, the, to, get a, to get an off center asymmetric bark on it. Um, this is the shape I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I, on, on this piece, I'm not gonna put the pedestal on the bottom. I'm going, to, I'm going to turn a little bit of an OG at the top and then go to the tenon on the bottom. So there's a, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tenon on it. Now, what I'm go also going to do is at the point when I'm starting, as I'm putting the tenon on it, is I am going to offset the piece a little bit. I'm gonna tilt it a little bit. So my tenon is gonna be a little bit off, my tenon is gonna be where I want it, but the piece is gonna be off center based on how the tenon is. So um, let me, so I want to shift to this and dispense with that. So what I want to do is I want to first start the piece off like this because I wanna put my tenon on, on the flat side. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if I was gonna mount it straight into the, into the piece, I would mount it like this, but I want to shift this part of it at the headstock on the side opposite where the tenon's gonna go a little bit so that I get, I'm gonna shift it like three quarters of an inch, okay? So this piece is now, I don't know if y'all can see this, let me see if I can adjust this a little bit, but it is not square to the tailstock, okay? It's not, it's, Square would be here, it's not, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure things are tight, get out of the firing line like was spoken about earlier and begin to put my tenon on. Now I've got my little, my little tenon measuring thing here. So I can quickly do this with it and say, that's how big my tenon's gonna be. So I'm gonna, I need to cut off the, the, these, these section of here that's a little bit, a little bit, uh, it's too far this way. So I'm gonna, in the process of it, I'm gonna cut this off and put my tenon on. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then once I get that, I'm gonna start shaping the bottom of the bowl while it's still in the, uh, between centers here. All right, any questions so far? No. All right. I am going to primarily use deep fluted bowl gouge. I can hear somebody talking, so please speak up. Deep fluted bowl gouge, swept back shoulders, all right? And I will, I will shape the tenon at the end to get it square with the skew, but I'm gonna do most of this with, with, this, with this gouge. Anybody out there except the, uh, the crickets? No, just we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm used to heckling, so <laughs> wait in. <laughs> All right, um, Matt, your voice is just a little low. I mean, I, I can hear you, but I just put my face shield on. How's that? Actually, much better. I hear you loud and clear. All right, I just the the boom mic is is moving a little bit, so so I'm getting my tool rest as close as I can and testing the spin, so I'm making sure I'm not hitting my tool rest. And I'm going to try, and what I'm doing here, a lot of this is I'm cutting air, okay? So uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to rub the bevel. I'm going to cut the air. I'm going to cut in an arc through the air to keep my arcs where I want it, okay? So if you rub the bevel, every time you're off the wood, your tool's going to jump. So you don't want that. So I'm trying to get a, a shearing cut and I'm gonna cut the bevel. I'm gonna cut these corners off and then creep up to this, to this point here where, where my tenon is. All right, uh, any questions on that? 
Let's so. turn wood. Now that's pretty off center. Doesn't that look like fun? You're going to be asked, what's the speed? I'm 792. If this comes off, it's not, it's going airborne. We can send Doug Rowe over to catch it for you. <laughs> no, it's 1250 all day long. He's good at throwing them off, but he's not good at catching them. I'm trying not to take too big a bite. All right. Let's have a look at where she is. So you can see, I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, I've got ridges here on, on this part here. Once I get off of the, uh, once I get off of the part where, where I'm where I'm rubbing the bevel, I'm getting ridges. So that's uh, e even not rubbing the bevel, it's bouncing a bit. But that's not important right now. Um, so let me let me get my let me get my tenon squared away, and then we'll we'll go from there. Now, what I'm trying to do with the skew here is get a really flat shoulder to put the top of my jaws on. So, and it's it's slightly. It's not quite flat. It's 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 indented a little. So I think that'll work. I think that'll hold it. All right. So um, my bowl is the, the outside of my bowl is going to curve away from. It's going to curve away from. It's going to come down to the tenon and curve away from it this way. So I want to take a little more off and not touch this shoulder I've just created for my jaws. So I'm going to creep up on it a little bit. Now I've turned it up a little bit. And I'm taking a shearing cut. Got a lot of bark flapping around here. Let's see, come back the other way, see if I can cut some of that off. All right, now, one of the things I'm looking at here is I'm going to have to. Wherever this ends, this is going to be the, the edge of my bowl. So ideally, what I'd like to do is take it up all the way up into here, into the bark. So let's see if I can do that successfully and not, and not, not hurt myself while doing it. <laughs> hey, Matt. Yes, sir. Matt, can yes, you sir. talk for just half a second about your glove? A couple of people have uh, asked a question about your glove. I wear a glove because when I first started turning years ago, I was cutting up some some pen blanks on a table saw and went through my, my finger, uh, nearly cut it off. It was repaired, but it is, uh, it's got some serious scar tissue and it is heavily sensitive to cold and sharp things like metal, like metal object, like the tool rest. Is, I'm in serious pain if I get it on the tool rest for too long a time. So I'm protecting it that way. Uh, I am also extremely conscious and careful of not getting it into the into the moving piece because I know that the moving piece can take the glove. So I never go past the edge of the tool rest, okay? Because I know it can get caught up. Um, but I do it uh, mostly for protection of my finger, so I can turn longer without being in pain, and because the, I like to turn fast, and the the the. Uh, I, I've abraded hair off of my hands and arms and, uh, and, uh, and, and cut myself with the flying chips 
because of some of the speeds and some of the woods I've turned, dry cherry was one of them. So I, I do it to protect my hand and protect my finger, and that's why I wear it. So yeah, I'm not wearing one on the and other hand. For for those of uh, those folks who are asking too, uh, you need to notice that Matt's glove is not uh, like a cotton jersey glove. It's more of a leather, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, it's this is this is a uh, this is a mechanics glove. Uh, yeah. It's it's insulated for the winter because it's freaking cold in here, and uh, um, it's tight. It, it's it, it's tight on my hand, so that it, there's there's almost nothing loose and flapping. It's not it's not a basic yard glove or anything like that. So, thank you. Hope that answers the questions. I think so. Thank you. Yep. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bring this edge up into here so that I ha at least have bark all the way around so I don't have this cut surface as part of my edge of my bowl. So I've got a ways to go yet. So let me see if I can set where that is going to be here. So I'm almost there, but I have further to go on this side. On this side, I'm almost there, but on this side, I have further to go. So let's creep up on it a little bit more. Once you take that all the way down and catch up, aren't you just going to lose your offset, though? It's just going to be no, rounded because point, because right? the edge is still going to be offset. Okay. By doing a, a natural edge bowl and getting it lined up to get the two sides even, this time we it, Matt's making them uneven. Yep. So you can see this. It's it's not. This is flat. The bowl surface is actually this, so I'm still going to be uneven a little bit. I didn't move it all that much. So, and I'm almost there. Need to be in here. Okay. Well, what I mean is, once you bring that side down, I'm not going to bring oh, the side down. I'm not going to touch the bar. Oh, you're not going to make that all the way around it? No, no, the part that your cut edge, where you got your cut edge. W once you get that down to where you took a, a stem off of it, the other side is already longer so to bring that i i was saying it'll still be skewed it'll be it'll be that's right it'll be cocked but it, it, at that point the center to the outer edge will will be the same diameter yeah it, yes that okay okay i, I got a little bit left here Folks, if you're joining us right now, this is Matt doing a demonstration for us tonight. This, Matt Harbour's doing it. This demonstration will be on our website and on our YouTube channel. So if you see it now and you want to see it again and get a close-up on the detail, you can do so. Uh, we can't do stop action and close-ups in this program. <laughs> this is live. <laughs> yeah, you can do it on YouTube. Nice scrape. Thank you. That was a cut. So I, what I've done, uh, the, the, the difference here is, is that the scrape would be like this, the scrape would be this, this. If I turn the tool in, I get this, I get to see the, see the, the, the shavings I'm getting. Little curly cues we all look for. Little tiny ones. Angel hair curly cues. Matt, is that green for your dry no. hair? <laughs> this was cut. Uh, Came down in a storm in the spring. Oh, okay. So it's not that cut. All right. So, so one of the things I will point out here is you can see how the edge of the bowl is 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 elongate. You know, undulates, if you will. Okay. So 
I'm not going to touch that bark on the top, and I will. Uh, I'm going to take a final cut on on the bottom here, on on this section. I've got a nice smooth. I like that. Okay. I got a little bit of cleanup to do here. So this isn't, you know, these techniques are, are the ones I was doing last week in, in that shearing versus scraping bit I did. All right, so there's, there's where I'm at so far. And it is, it, it's not all that visibly offset, but it is slightly offset. All right, so I'm going to switch it around and do the inside of the bowl. You got your chuck clean. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of mileage. And I was like, I think I posted that thing like two years ago or something like that. <laughs> we know how. Lots, lots of suggestions, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, what, what he's referring to really is what he's referring to is 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 I had a I had uh, about two years ago. One, this chuck was was pretty crusted up with uh, lacquer and and wet wood and all kind of stuff. So. I asked a question on another group, Wood Turning Connections, about what people's suggestions were for how to clean it. And I got a ton of suggestions, and it recently got resurrected. The whole discussion got resurrected. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Matt. I was wondering. I was like, Matt knows how to clean his check, but I'll just throw out there what I use anyway. So. <laughs> oh, it was good. It, 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 I appreciate all the suggestions. Uh, I, I haven't tried that uh, the the oven cleaner stuff. That was one of the things I haven't tried. So yeah, that works next, wonders. Yeah, well, the next time I somebody asks, or the next time the opportunity arises, I'm certainly going to try it because a lot of people do that. So who knows? The trick, with the, got, the, oven first. the trick with oven cleaner is wear gloves. Yeah. <laughs> well, I first tried mineral spirits, and and uh, and that didn't work quite so well. I mean, it, it did get some cleaning, uh, but uh, it, it was not satisfactory. So then I used, uh, I think I said lacquer thinner, and that cleaned it up real good, primarily because the, 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 the sanding sealer I spray here at the lathe is, is a lacquer-based sanding sealer, and probably some of that crust was lacquer, lacquer stuff. So anyway, um, so I am going to hollow the inside of the bowl. Uh, I am not going to drill it out with anything. I'm just going to have at it with the, with the with with the deep fluted bowl gouge again. Maybe something else. Um, one of the things. Uh, one, let me switch to this and kill the light. How's that look? No, that doesn't look good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that looks good. Yeah, I got to get some masking tape to make it look good there. Um, so one of the things you're dealing with here is you're dealing with an uneven edge. So you have to be very careful. You want to preserve that, that, that uneven edge. So yeah. masking tape, 1,001 uses. Um, so. What I'm, going to tr what I'm going to do so that I don't destroy my edge is I'm going to make cuts from the center to the rim. And these are not, well, I will be riding the bevel in some places. I'm mostly going to be cutting air again because clearly if I'm cutting the wood here, I'm not cutting it out here. You know, let me switch to this camera and show that. If I'm cutting the wood here, when I roll the piece, I'm not cutting wood here. So I've got to be very careful. I've got to watch the shadow of my edge and, and not go too far because I don't want to wreck this edge. I want to preserve that edge as much as I can. So I'm 
What's the bevel angle of your uh, tool? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I've changed it twice. Um, how would you measure it? Looks like 53 and a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's about it's somewhere between 50 and 55 degrees, I would guess. You see, I was close. Yeah. You are not wrong, Mr. Eddie. Captain Eddie. Those numbers don't mean a thing, folks, if you can work with the tool. I need to change some things. We'll take a look. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, uh, let me switch back to this one to show you what I see. Doesn't that look interesting? So I'm going to drop my tool rest a little bit so I can get a better angle on it. So air trimmers. Yeah, you know, they, I cut this stuff off with the with the scissors the other day. <laughs> Works good. <laughs> Magic of TV. <laughs> yeah. So again, I have to watch how close I'm getting to this to to the edge of this piece because I want to preserve my my bark. So that's good to to see. I'm taking light cuts so I don't hurt anything. And I'm watching the outside contour of my bowl. You lost them. What? Hold on, Matt. I got it. All right, you got them? Yeah. Yeah, I'm spotlighted again. Okay, so one of the things you gotta you gotta you gotta be careful also is to is to be careful down down here. Uh you can see that I'm starting to peel things back and I want to preserve this piece of it here too. So I don't want to go too far. I don't want to get too confident that I could just, just hollow through the bowl. I've got to, I've got to be cognizant that I'm not at the edge yet down here. Okay. So I've got to watch that also. Matt, we have a question in the chat. Yes, sir. Could you come in with a parting tool to preserve the edge? Um, you could, uh, if I was coming in, I, I would actually use a skew over a parting tool. Okay. Um, your problem is, is again, is that you've got an, is, is that the edge is undulating. Let me, let me switch to this other camera here and show the overhead camera and show that. Okay. Can you see how this, how this goes? You see how it, how it undulates Thank back you, and forth? Sense. So, um, you know, if I'm coming in with the skew, if I'm here, coming in here, I, I'm going to be whacking it with this up here, okay? So one of the, one of the reasons why I'm doing it the way I am is so I can approach it and, and get real soft with my cuts right near the edge while I watch the outside contours of my bowl, okay? So See, uh, I understand that. I, I, I would think in the in, out, in, out, in was going to give us a problem with almost any tool right now. Yeah, and and anything you're doing, it's got to be you got to be cautious with it. Now, if you'd like, I can try going in with the skew and see if I I can get it done here. I'd, mean, rather, continue, I'd rather you continue on the road you started. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. I'd you did. That's fine. We won't prove anything tonight by turning this bowl with a skew. Uh, <laughs> we can get Paul Barn to come over and catch it. You know? Remember, he's not good on catching. He's just good on throwing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, now, I'm, uh, take, uh, I'm taking a really light cut, watching the contour of my ball, the outer contour of my ball, and, and following that. Because that outer contour is the best uh, the best idea I have of where the edge of that bowl is. So I might be cutting hard here, but when I get up near the edge, I go light. I don't want to push through the edge of the bowl. I don't want to destroy my edge. And once, I'm, once I've got my bowl edge where I want it with the thinness, it's still a little thick here. 
I don't I, I, I don't want to come back to it because it'll be it'll be won't be just as well supported. So I'm trying to get this decent thinness. And let me switch to the the other camera here. So show you my progress on it. So I could probably go a little thinner. I'm delighted that I've kept as much of the bark so far as I have. So let's try and go a little thinner on that and see if, see if I can make it work. So I'm making, the cut I'm taking is with the handle of the tool dropped a bit. So I'm getting, a, and, a, and it's getting a shearing scrape on the inside of the, of the bowl. And I can do the same thing. And it's shearing because the handle is dropped and, and the tool edge is at an angle to the way the wood is coming into it. Very light. Okay. Um, let's go with that. I'm going to shift my tool rest in so I can get it so I'm not so far from the wood I'm cutting. Doug is working, as Matt is working here, I'm going to remind you folks, it's half past the hour. Matt Harbor is doing a demonstration here on Worldwide Wood Turners. And if you have any questions, you can place them in chat, but we'll take some questions following the demonstration. All right, now let's see if there's anything I need to work on. Aha, everybody see that? I broke a piece out. I don't That's know that where it went. Was, uh, that came back out at us. Yeah, there's, if you, if you, the piece is actually not that good a piece. Um, let me switch to the overhead camera. And I don't know if you all can see this, but there's a series of cracks through here. And this piece that broke out, broke out along two of those cracks here. So. We have Doug Rowe coming over to help you glue it back together. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where it went. I don't see it anywhere. So <laughs> Actually, I say, see any glue in the sawdust. That's all you need. Doug Rowe, <laughs> run out. Doug Rowe, run outside and see if you can catch it. <laughs> hey Kim, how about some resin in there? What do you think? Kim? Right, so me... As long as it's dry. <laughs> It's probably it'd not dry enough for the resin. It'd be a whole lot easier to get resin from my house than Kim's. Yes, it would. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm still trying to convince Doug to send me some of that birch that you gave him. The, the resin uh, works fine on birch, not, not Matt. Oh, now one, of the, one, of the things, Never mind. one of the things that I see here is that this part of the wall is a little too thick from I want it thinner. I want this thinner. This, see how thin this is here? Well, you can't see it. Um, let me switch to. So, this is my 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 wall here, but it's it's substantially thicker here. So I want to try and get this thinner. Uh, so I'm going to have to have to take this part of it closer to the edge. Matt, may I ask a question? Yeah, certainly. Um, why would you choose to go from the inside out versus the outside in, especially when you're trying to salvage the bark? Well, um, I can go outside in. If I'm, one of the reasons uh, I'm going out inside out is I'm, is I'm trying to protect, preserve my edges, okay? Um, I, I can't ride a bevel. Okay, because I don't have a bevel on half of the wood. I, I gotcha. can't ride the bevel because because I half of the wood is not is not there. If you follow what I'm saying, if that makes sense, does it make sense? So I could do that, and I have done that. 
I understand. So that would look like this, but notice where my hand, my hand tool handle is, is like, you know, I'm hanging over the edge of the edge of the lathe. You follow me? And it's a lot easier to have my handle tucked into my hip. Lost another piece. I saw where that one went. So yeah, those cracks are problematic. Um, so, but it's still, you notice that I still, even going in, I still didn't, didn't, didn't cut this bark off with it here. So I still have some bark flaps that didn't get cut off with that. So it, it honestly, it, it's not gonna matter if I go in or out, I'm still gonna get the same sort of issue. You're, you're gonna tear your bark off if you stress it too much. So the trick is to is to go lightly on the edge, whether you, whether you're going inside out or you're or you're riding the bevel or trying to ride the excuse me ride the bevel going in this way. Does that make sense, Kim? Okay. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean up the inside of this with a little bit. No, let's see. Now, the reason that the one side's thicker than the other because it's offset a little bit. Well, it's it's also the the, the way I'm cutting into it because it, it's I, I'm I'm this thick out 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 here at at the outside of it. Let me let me shift to the other the overhead camera and show that a little better. Um, so out here, out here, I'm this thick, but. As I get further down in, it's it's little it's widening out a little bit. My contour is shifting in this way. Okay, here, on the outside, my contour is like this, right? But as it shifts this way, and as I try to follow it on the inside, I'm clearly getting a little too far from that edge. I'm drift. You know what I'm saying? I'm not this thin. I'm not thin here like I am here. See how thin that is here? So as I get down here, and the angle is changing. So instead of it being the angle that the wood is here is straight out this way, it's now this way here. So you're getting a different cross section of the bark. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Um, the bark is shifting this way. So you've got a wider, a wider cross section of the bark here than you do here. So here, even if my wall, my wall thickness is about the same, okay? But instead of it being just this little bit here, it's now shifted here. So it's covering a, la a larger area, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go clean, ac clean across the bottom of the bowl here with a different tool. Let me shift this off like this. And, uh, and then I'll take it off and show it to you. So from the top, it looks like that. But from the side, it looks like that and like that. And you can't really see it all that, all that well from this angle. But this side is taller than this side, which is 
from the offset. So that's how those bowls are turned. Use a better piece of wood than I used. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's basically the demonstration. Uh, is there are there any questions apart from finishing the bottom? That's basically the demonstration. Are there any questions on this? Feel free, gang. Jump in. One statement uh, that you stayed out of the fire range when that piece came off, right? Yeah, both both times. I lost I lost two chunks of this. So there was a small wedge and then another wedge. So yeah, I was I was over here. <laughs> uh, I, I have a question. Job. Good job. Uh, yes, good job. Um, the question is, is would you try to finish it on the lathe or would you just uh, do a hand finish afterwards on that? Um, um, I, uh, I, I use, on, on pieces that have natural edges, I try to use a, uh, a lacquer or a spray. So I, I may sanding sealer it while, while I'm on the lathe and, and while I'm sanding it. But you have to be very careful when you're sanding natural edge pieces. It's a good way to get your fingers hurt. So um you got to you know it's like was said earlier you got to try and stay out of the firing line so uh i will use the sanding sealer if i need to i will sand on the lathe uh but the finishing i do off the lathe because i want to i want the same finish on the bark that i have on the rest of the piece and i'm usually using a spray lacquer or a spray urethane of some kind anybody else i think it was a, thank you a good demonstration uh, I think a lot of people don't understand you've got to practice at that a lot. And yeah, uh, I have taken a good many classes at Aramon School of Arts and Crafts, and some of them was uh, pertained to that. And uh, you just have to practice and practice, and you're uh, you're not going to get perfect ones every time you do it. Uh, maybe not in the beginning, but uh, it takes a lot of practice to do it and get the feel of that hitting and missing. Yeah, and and when, when, when we're first taught to turn, we're taught ride the bevel, get, get, a, get, a, get a shoulder where you can put your bevel on and you can ride your bevel all the way across the inside of the bowl, all around the outside of the bowl. When you start introducing natural edge or anything with cavities, like a burl piece or something like that, anytime you try to ride the bevel, especially if you're pushing hard on the bevel, you're going to get bumps and it's going to really screw up the piece in the lines of your of your cut. So you now have to change the idea of how you turn to not ride the bevel necessarily until you've got solid wood all the way around because any bump, any, you know, even if you're, if you've ever turned a piece that has a knot in it, you know the same thing. The, you know, all of a sudden the hardest of the wood changes and your tool doesn't ride the bevel the same way. So you now have to shift your thinking. I am cutting with my edge. My edge is following an imagined arc mm -hmm. or a visualized arc in, in space. So I am turning that, that tool edge is, 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 is in, you know, I've got it turned, so I'm getting a shear. So I get clean cuts. I'm not taking a big bite because if I try to take a big bite, I'll just shred the piece. Um, and, and I'm following a visualized curve in space that gives me the curve I want, the curve I want on, on the bowl. So I am following this curve, despite the fact that half of the wood isn't here for a good inch and a half of the, uh, of the piece. I'm still following that curve with my tool edge, whether I've got wood supporting it or not. And, and that's what, you know, the, one of the reasons why I'm doing the same thing on the inside of the piece is in and getting light cuts on the you know uh, on the interior here is because i'm i'm really trying to be very very careful i'm trying you know the piece the, the tool is not really supported by the wood behind it uh, especially where there's no wood at all so and you don't want to you know be pushing hard on it and then you know all of a sudden with no wood you just you just tear your piece apart so you've got to maintain control of your tool and your tool edge and where it is and uh, be very cautious about what you're doing so so I said before, it takes a lot of practice. Yep. Practice, it does. practice, practice. And the first couple well, pieces you're going to do, you're probably going to going to not survive. So right, keep your hands out of the way. That's right. Assume so one, it's going to break on you. One I'm thing that yeah, one thing that uh, may be important on here. You're saying ride the bevel. You probably need to float on the bevel. 
versus ride the bevel. If you push against, if you push the wood against on the bevel, you start getting harmonic vibrations and everything else. So you really need to float the bevel. It's probably a better terminology. We were told to ride it, but floating it's probably a better way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, sure. But th the important point about that is you can't do that when you're turning a natural edge piece because there's nothing to ride. There's nothing to float on. You're just, you know, you're, you're, you're turning an empty space a lot. So Right. It's hard to understand on... until you do it. Right. I'll throw a nickel in here. I, I found my best practice was on wet wood. <clears throat> yep, it's more forgiving. Yes. And doesn't hurt as bad when it hits you. <laughs> hey, and then my, my two cents on it, and I think we, we talked about this a little bit last week too with the Natural Edge Bowls. A, a good tip to help you keep that bark on is just uh, keep running some beads of CA glue around it. And yes. uh, put that set up. And it, uh, it'll help some of that, that, that bark right on the edge stay on. Yeah, under normal circumstances on a piece like this, before I started doing the inside, I would super glue along, along, this, along the edge of, the, uh, of where, the, where the, the spongy outer wood meets, the, meets the, the heartwood. All of that would have super glue. Before I even started turning the inside while all the bark was still on it, the whole thing would get super glue on the edge. And make sure it's cured because you don't want that stuff spattering all over. Matt, I think you did a wonderful presentation tonight. I thank you very much. Um, thank you. And great tool use, great design use, and some good tips. And folks, if you want to give that a try, we'd like to see the results. Good battery. I'd like to see the results. But uh, Matt. And remember, this will be available on our website and our YouTube channel. And uh, if you got any questions from Matt, hey, you can throw them in a chat. He reads too. So that's <laughs> what we'll do. Um, we're having a pretty good meeting this evening. It's about quarter to, to the hour. And uh, remind folks that this is your wood turning club. I'll say that a lot, but I really mean it. If you like some changes or you like to see some other, other things, come on, jump, step up. Um, I remember we had one more demonstrator said they would show something in the next week or so. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't keep the note. So if you'd like to do a demonstration in the near future, put it in the chat or give, let me, give me a hollow wave or whatever. And if you want to email me, you can email me at the club email address, which is worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. No spaces, no, no capitalization, nothing. Just worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. That's sort of like our website, worldwidewoodturners.org. We try to keep it simple. Uh, Dane, do we have any? <sighs> yeah, Jeff, Jeff's got a jig I think he wants to show off. Oh, I like that, Jeff. That's yes, a good that. look, How'd you do that? Ha! We win. Sure. <laughs> have a tonight? Okay. Um, yeah, I was playing around with, I uh, found a mustache on uh, Zoom there. Um, I emailed this PDF to you. It's a... Um, well, the, the topic is it's a sanding jig made out of um, golf tees. Uh, there's a link on the uh, PDF file. A uh, gentleman that one of the clubs I belong to from uh, First State in Delaware, he's passed away, but he wrote this up. And I did verify that these are a dollar a piece. You know, so we, he ended up buying them. And what the idea is that uh, you make a uh, piece of sandpaper that size. What they were doing is they were getting like a two inch pipe and then sharpen the edge on a grinder so you can cut out pieces of sandpaper and then glue them. Um, and then these are quarter inch rods uh, with a couple nuts glued into the bottom. Put that into your drill and you got yourself a nice soft uh, sanding jig, you know. And you also wrote down numbers on them. I just happened to find a box full of them because uh, when he passed away, he donated all this tools and equipment and whatever leftovers to the club. And um, I purchased some of this stuff. Uh, but so the write-up is there. Uh, I emailed it to the club uh, this morning, um, and it's one of those neat things. You know, if you're doing a lot, uh, I had a buddy that would buy uh, drills at um, you know flea markets, garage sales, you know, five or ten bucks, and he'd have you know six or eight drills all lined up, all plugged in as he needed to sand. Just grabbed another drill. When they went bad, just replaced them. You know, you replace the piece and glue down another one. So. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the tip this evening. 
All right. Uh, we're, we're showing some things. Uh, get your spotlight off, Dane. You yeah, let's pass up. Yeah, Doug has got something. Uh, let me pull him up. All right, Doug, what you got? While you're showing yours, I'm going to go grab mine, too. Okay. So since we're on the topic of natural edge bowls, I probably showed this one back when we first started doing our Zoom meetings. But this one's a piece of mesquite. But like Matt was talking about, sometimes you'll lose some of the bark coming around depending on where you finalize your shape at. So um, I just stopped where I thought the coolest bark was. And that's the tiny tiny little piece of mesquite right there and then this one's black walnut where i kept more of the bark on the on the top there but based on where i chose to to finish rounding that was the shape that i got well i wanted to show you guys once you start playing around with that natural edge bowls there's some other crazy things you can do and you can actually leave the the flat parts in there and then it, it takes some sanding, usually with a power sander, and you can work those flat parts down and get some other unique shapes out of it. You don't always have to go all the way around. Um, it's, just, it's just a different feature when you want to start playing around with something different. Um, I had a, a larger bowl that I did like that where I left the flats on there and I sanded them down pretty good for a girl who asked me to make something for her mother that passed away. And she said, make whatever you want for me. I just want it to have blue butterflies. Like, how the heck am I going to put blue butterflies? And then that's what I came up with was a natural edge, then sanded the, the flat parts down. And that gave me uh, surface space. And my wife found me some nice blue butterflies on Amazon. And I glued them on there. And she about cried when she got it. She loved it. So I guess what I'm saying is you don't always have to come all the way around on your natural edge bowls. You can just play around with the different shapes and see what you like. Yep. One of the things that I do too on the natural edge, if I lose an edge uh, is, is I, uh, uh, I, I use a burner. I use, I got one of these little craft burners. I don't know if y'all can see that. Hold on, hold on. We're getting to you, man. All right. Let me turn this one on and turn. This is a craft burner. Yep. Okay, you can get them at most hardware stores and hobby stores. Uh, it takes uh, butane, and so this is a piece of box elder, and most of the bark came off of it. So what all I do is I just scorch the bits where the bark came off. So with a little bit of sanding, if if I've got some overburn on the sides or something, you can't really tell that the bark's missing. It follows the natural contours of the bark. It's just the bark's missing. So. That's you know that's what it looks like when it's been hit by the hit by the torch. So there's right. a couple of pieces that still have the bark on it, like over here, but most of the bark came off of this when I was turning it. So yeah, I do a lot of mine. So I'm gonna, I have one show. So this is a mesquite, decanted, asymmetric, kind of like what the Matt was saying. Um, you know, so the this side is about an inch about an inch higher than this side. And this side wall is probably two inches higher than this side wall. And it's done the you know the same way by changing Very cool, your Dane. when you're when you're chucking it. So Very nice. But one cool feature about this course this is mesquite when you're looking at that white ambient there what is that it looks like it looks like a snake yeah and so it goes all the way around right you know so that's what we call it my wife noticed that all the way down to the snake tail i didn't notice that she's one that identified that wow and here on the bottom there was a lemon tree and so i filled that with a clear resin and so that kind of mimics a uh, gambles quail out here, so it's the snake coming down on the gambles quail. So it's kind of a unique <laughs> thing that what you planned on. So, but yeah, natural edges are fun. I think that looks like Aladdin's lamp on the bottom. I'm sorry. I called it. I'd have called it Roadrunner. Looks like Aladdin's lamp on the bottom when you were holding it up that way. 
I'm I'm still not a, I'm not Aladdin's a, loyal. Aladdin's loyal. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, could be. That East Coast accent, sorry. <laughs> hey Dane, yeah, if you'll pull me up, I'll I'll show one more uh crazy one. Instead of it being a natural edge, it's more of a natural body. So oh. there's a log right there, and I left the log as natural as I could and then cut in my, my lid and then put a little uh, resin bit. dog treat thing on there. So you the intention of the dog in there and I never did get around to doing it. That's just, you know, straight out of the, the firewood pile. Right. And left all the bark on there and just yeah. did the stop. Oh. Makes for a good hiding place or something. Yeah. I'm right. just surprised his wife still gives him dog treats. <laughs> <laughs> only when i behave only when i behave so i don't get a lot all right thank you doug any other gallery if you have something uh cade's got something to show and we a few yeah. other well, i've got a couple too all right we were going doug uh kazane dane let's see dane, let's, i'm sorry let's go let's go to cade hi everybody now how's everyone you. doing hope all is well Hope you're staying warm, Matt. <laughs> I have a Turning couple. Does that. Yeah, it gets the adrenaline rush going, especially doing live edge bowls. I have a uh, few live edge bowls here and then another Harry Potter one that I've been working on. Um, so I have a couple live edge bowls. Here's one. And I flared the rim out. This piece was turned from the whole log, so I left the pith in the bowl. Now you can leave the pith in a bowl or a vase or a cup. The only thing is you need to relieve the stress from that pith. And I find anything less than three eighths of an inch wall thickness consistency, that pith will not crack, crack. It will move slightly. As you can see, the form bloops out a little bit here. That's from the warpage. This was turned wet and it's turned to an eighth of an inch wall thickness. I have another one here, which is turned out of the crotch of a tree. So it has some beautiful color and feathering in the side here. Again, the pith is left in the piece. This is turned to about an eighth of an inch wall thickness. Very good. You have here's, to be impressed now. Here's a small little mulberry bowl. I like going thin. I like pushing the envelope of how thin I can go. Um, in the beginning, of course, you have stuff, some bird would go flying, but as you practice and perfect it, you, you have far less items come off the lathe. And it's not just a catch when you turn thin bowls. If you get a catch, it blows up. There is no wood left to hold it together. So this is all I can piece. see is Eddie. This is a piece oh, of hold mulberry. On. Hold on, hold on, Kate. Okay. I can, any any co-host can click on Kate. I can't find him. No, oh, I've got Kate. He's spotlighted. Kate, Kate just fine. I got Kate. Yep. Yeah, I can see Kate. All I see is Eddie. Check, hey, check he's okay. I, I got Kate. Oh, there he is. All right, now Mike. it's okay. Check to see if you. I got somebody else. If you've pinned him, I got back to Matt. Let's just right, what happened him. here. Hold on, okay. Kate. Let me bring you back up. Oh, there we are. There we are. Wow. So this is another one that's an eighth of an inch wall thickness, a little bark inclusion that goes down the side of this bowl. And this piece is um, an eighth of an inch as well. Now I like going thin and thinner and thinner. This is a small live edge bowl. This is poplar. And the wall thickness on this piece is one millimeter all the way to the base. You can actually see through it. Um, here. Use your other light. Okay, here. There you go. No, oh, we're not seeing Kate. Oh, okay, well, if I had my flashlight on my phone, I could put it behind it, but oh well. You can see light come through the sides and again the pith is pith is in the side of this bowl actually 
You know what I can do? I'll take this light here. And I can go right like. Oh, yeah, we can see it there. Oh, yeah, that's thin. Wow. Well, there we are. Challenge accepted. Millimeter. And then um, the Harry, Harry Potter wand I've been working on. Uh, last month, I did a Harry wand and a Hermione wand. So the customers were so happy they came back and they wanted a Christmas gift for their daughter as well. So they asked me to create the elder wand. So this is the elder wand. It was turned on the lathe, then carved, then stained. Um, and then the, here's the, here's the top of the wand. Wow. Here's the hydroglyphs here. And it's all turned and carved on the lathe and then shined up. This was painted white with acrylic and the hydroglyphs were painted with a pinstripe, a fine pinstripe paintbrush. Yeah. And where's my camera? You're right. That's, you the, that's the one that Dumbledore uses. Yes. Yeah. That looks good. Very nice. So that's almost on its way at the door. Just another coat of finish. So nice. Really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Kate, have you talked about your uh, wig um, um, stands on this? No, I haven't. That's, that's um, something I've never heard about. Uh, I think it's a great topic to talk about. Okay. Um, well, one thing I do here locally is uh, I sort of head off the wig stands for Cancer Foundation, for Cancer Support Centers. So I head it off and I organize it for three wood turning guilds around my area that I'm a member of. And basically the wood is donated to me by the lumber yard. When they get wood that is too damaged, that they can't sell or it's too cracked, they donate it to me. And then what I do is I cut up a couple wig stand turning blanks and I hand these out to all the members free of charge. And anyone willing and able to make a wig stand they then get the free material, turn the, turn the wig stand, donate it back to me, and then every two weeks I deliver wig stands to three different cancer support, uh, support centers. Uh, one thing I did this morning, I turned four this morning on my lathe just to practice and prepare for my upcoming free demonstration this Saturday. So here's one of them. That's made out of cherry. This one is made out of cherry on the top and the bottom and an ash spindle. And then these two are this one solid out of ash. And the last one is an ash top and a base with a cherry spindle. And it's really a great project for all aspects of turning because here you have the outside profile of a bowl. You have a tenon. Then you have the inside shape of a bowl to remove some of the weight from the lid. On the bottom, you have preparation of a straight sided dog style bowl or you can decorate it or shape it however you want. But on this piece, you can practice a mortise style of tenon. Just like Doug Miller, I do the three lines, which frames in my signature uh, where it's from and the species of the wood. And then the spindle is great practice for your spindle gouge, your skew, your roughing gouge, whatever you choose to use. I tend to lean towards the skew. And then also with the final connections and using calipers to get very precise connections with a seamless flow from one wood to the other is also another really good skill builder. Um, it's dished out in the bottom. So anyone can put their uh, watches, jewelry, rings, necklaces in there. Um, yeah, 
And it's just a great cause, very near and dear to my heart um, that I sort of formulate for several of the wood turning clubs up here. Um, I have a fancy one over here. Um, I've made it for someone very near and dear to my heart. My mom was diagnosed with Burkitt's lymphoma three times and she beat it three times. So I took the time to make her a fancy wig stand. So God forbid if it ever came back again, it's, it's waiting for her. But I went above and beyond. So on the spindle, I did some off center turning. And then on the surrounding areas of the wood, I practiced uh, wood burning and pyrography. So on this one I did, I did a zebra print or a tiger stripe. And that's actually following the wood grain lines of the maple that I used. The spindle is off center. Along the top and the bottom of the spindle, I did a leopard or a cheetah animal print. And then on the base, again, I did a tiger stripe or a zebra print type pattern, all wood, all burned with my wood burner. This is shaded dark, whereas the top and the base is stipple art. So I think I counted this at one time. It goes along the inside of the lid as well. But um, I think I counted it one time because I was watching the Leafs play hockey and of course they always lose. So I didn't have to really pay attention to the TV. Um, I think I was upwards around 2000 or so dots. Um, I had to keep track so every 20, I sort of did a tick on a piece of paper just in case I la lost count. Um, I wouldn't want to go back and count them all again. That would be horrendous. But a lot of time on my hands when I'm watching uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs lose. Okay, <laughs> not putting you on a spot. I think you, you offered to do a demo for us. Yes, I will do a demo for you guys. Um, Doug made a great point probably two weeks ago, um, a lidded box. I can do a lidded box with a separate finial, uh, exotic wood color contrasting finial. We can talk about different styles of box lids. Um, I'm hoping to do that in the new year. I'm quite busy leading up to Christmas uh, with all my countless orders and commissions that I have to get out to the post office. So they're there by Christmas. Um, but yes, I will definitely do a demonstration and I'm looking to do it in January for you guys, if that's okay. Oh, that's fine with us, sir. Yeah, okay. you're about as busy as Mr. Brown is with those ornaments right now and, and turnings. Yeah, those ornaments, I put out a little ad on the ornaments and I mean, I've made over 150 in two weeks. Well, wow. three days, three days, I turned 150 Christmas ornaments. Okay, great, great. You're not running along with Trey yet, but you're getting close. Getting close. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you, Kay. Appreciate it. Great, yeah. great show tonight. And we, I, we often get photographs uh, on our website or to our club of people that do make wig stands. Um, if you don't, some of the things we do, and I'm talking about we, the wood turners. Uh, we turn freedom pens for our troops. We turn wig stands for cancer victims. We turn um, the 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 boxes that go to and boy, I've lost it. Beads of um, courage. Pardon. Beads of courage. Beads of Beads courage. Beads of courage yeah. boxes. Um, and there are a few other projects we're working on. If you are working on that project, you want to show us get more about it, tell us what your sources are, how you do it, what your tricks are. We want that, please. Um, and we got a, oh, well, they just posted on our chat line that this Saturday, December 5th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, He's doing a demo for his, uh, to support his local cancer chapter. It's a complimentary demo. We love those. And if you like more information, it's on our chat. Remind you again, save the chat. And with just about the top of the hour, just past the top of the hour, um, I have to welcome the new members. If you're a new member of the club, it is your club. You're welcome to have 
participate any way you wish. Uh, we, we, we refer to some of these folks as co-hosts because they stay quite involved, but you can too. There's no fee, no charge, nothing special. It's just, you have to be involved in wood turning and we'd like to have you there. And I spent, said a minute ago about sending photographs. You can send your photographs to Worldwide Woodturners at gmail.com or you can send them to Dave at our website. There's a contact thing on the website, do, 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 and uh, that's secret for how you type it in. And you can send him the photograph too. We use them on the website, the newsletter, and here on our program. Dane, anybody else up tonight? Yeah, I got a couple. I think Joe Lesko has something he wants to show off. All right. Yeah, in Dallas. <laughs> Joe Lesko says Dallas iPhone. Joe, change the name of your phone. Okay. Uh, don't know how to do that. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Don't know how to. Okay, go to the next guy. All right, Joe, you didn't have didn't have an image. Now we're looking at Dallas's iPhone. Yes. Yep. I tried my hand at natural edge bowls. This is a walnut bowl. And I did burn the edge, like he said earlier. And I did take the bark did fly off and I burnt it like he was discussing it earlier. It turned out well. But the one I wanted to talk about, remember I was back oh a week or so I asked about the buckeye. And if anybody turned Buckeye and how they liked it. And you all said they loved it, right? Well, I said, hey, you can mail me some. It's okay. Well, I turned it and it turned like it had feather all over it. Every, every piece I put on it, every burr, every thing I touched it, it feathered out. And this is what it turned out to be. It's, it's about a quarter inch thick. But it, it, it's all black and white. I love it. Yeah, but it is, it is impossible to turn for me. No. I like to never got it feathered. Uh, the, I had sanded and sanded and sanded to get the feather out of it. That's beautiful. Now yeah, have have a nice great well, the Buckeye that I turned was, uh, was burl. So I had three pieces of burl that I turned. And the heartwood, the dark heartwood was super hard. And the lighter sapwood was super soft and stringy, like you're talking about. So it, it just like best way to describe it, it turns the feather. Yeah. So so you get a really good shear cut, sharp shearing cut on it. And then if you have to, you sand it and you use sanding sealer to to lock it down so it doesn't feather up every time you sand it and touch it with a tool. So yep. yeah. Do you have any more of that buckeye, Dallas? I'm sorry. Do you have any more of that buckeye? About four more logs. It's about, oh, I'm thinking about 12 inches thick. Yeah. And then well, I have about five or six logs of uh, sassafras. I like that. Ooh, sassafras is good. I yeah. love sassafras tea. Yeah, I showed it. I think I showed it a couple of weeks ago. That bow I turned, it's got a really black center with light heartwood outside of it right now it's full of grapes <laughs> and your whole shop smells like root beer when you're done yeah i love yeah. that you, you can't yeah. lie to somebody what you're turning if when you just turn that that's anyway like that's this is the but the the buckeye results i told you i would show you what what happened that this is what happened i like it i do like it yeah very I nice very it. very distinctive it's 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 very light it's like it's really made of plastic you tap it, it has a plastic sound to it. Hmm. It's What's unusual. I've never done anything like that before. Thank you, Dallas. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, well, finished, Dallas. Thank you. What, what finish did you use? What finish? I, I used just beeswax right at the moment. Oh, sweet. Looks great. A, a mixture of beeswax and stuff. I, I'm more realistic. I like it, the, the actual wood flavor or the texture of it instead of the real shiny. You make that shiny, it will look like plastic. Great job. Yeah. Good job. All yeah. right. So We're, Jeff has got something again, I believe. Or I wrote yeah, it down. I was, I was sitting there going through some uh, stuff in my, uh, my uh, garage there and happened to open up a box. 
and I found this old turning that somebody I bought a bunch of shops out one time and this was in one of the boxes so it's still not totally finished but um, I don't know how hollow it is but it's a pretty cool piece it is and so someday I'll find it. I just thought it was a neat shape it was like a genie bottle huh? I'll have to give it to my girlfriend she loves genie <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to make a bottle stopper too for it and give it away to her. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I've got one more question. He has a bone for dog Doug too, by the way. For his <laughs> we we had a question. Uh, can you get those that little oval? Can you get that at the earrings for Doug? Can that shape? You know, put the hang out. You know. Who has a question? This is Dallas again. Sorry to bother you again. No, oh. no, no. Sorry. I put a bug in Kim's ear. I'd like to see a, a demonstration on resin. I've never done it, never touched it, and just curious about it. How many different types are out there, how it's used, how what do I need to do to use it, or do I just need, need to stay completely away from it? Um, I plan on doing a video to kind of show my experience with Total Boat Resin, because I only use Total Boat Resin, only have used Total Boat Resin. So it's going to be kind of just how I use it. Um, it's going to kind of be a lengthy video. So hopefully if I get that put, to get put together sometime soon, it's really a shop, so it's hard to be out there. Um, yeah. I'm working on one big, huge one right now that I'm kind of testing uh, some total boat out as well. So that will be in yeah, a couple I, weeks. I talked to you today, so. Yeah. Yeah, so um yeah and then if i get that video done i'll send it over to eddie or we can just live do the video screen share kind of thing and i can just play it i have no reception in my shop so it'd be like impossible for me to take you out to where it's at and do a demo with it out there because my shop has no wi-fi so Dallas, we'll take, we'll Dallas, take uh, yes two weeks ago, we had a resin master uh put on a demo with the ins and outs of resin casting and whatnot. Uh, so it'll okay. be worth all going back and reviewing that on the website. Okay, I'll look that up. So that was uh, Robert Franklin, um, but I uh, did it. Uh, it was a two part demo that he put on. Okay. And that will get you started. Yeah, or not, right? Or, or not, right. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of it with, with the resin is you know, experimentation. Everybody has different outcomes and experiences with resin and, and the various types of resin products there are. Yeah, I've been using Total Boat for, what, about a year? And I'm still stretching it and trying to do a lot of things with it that you're not really supposed to do. So I get a lot of the... the I get a lot of the mistakes and a lot of this, but I'm not afraid to do that because I, I want to see its limits. I'm always, I'm that kind of person that like pushes right. the button, you know, <laughs> let's see, see how I can push the limit. Uh, this piece while we're, while you're on me, <laughs> this piece was kind of one of those pieces. I kind of pushed the limit. It had some really rotten, uh, it's a walnut crotch piece with a live edge that I burnt with a lighter and got it to like where it's like a leather it looks kind of like leather yeah i love that i think it's really anyways it was really rotten in here so i took the and resin does not like moisture at all no resin likes water so just so you know um because it was still rotten and it had a lot of moisture in it i wanted to fill it but I didn't have to wait for it to dry. So I took some fast set resin and just coated the inside after I chiseled this all out and then waited for that to cure, which created a barrier between my fill resin and the moisture, even though you're not supposed to do that. I'm, I'm like a breaking the rules. And so I filled it and it ended up working out flawlessly, but that's, like I can't tell people that you can do that all the time because it might not work out. It's one of those, you know, experiment with it, see what happens. But because I'm, I'm impatient, I was willing to risk having to chisel it all out or fix it, kind of thing. But that's just kind of an example. Of can you pushing can, the limits? Can you seal that moist area with super glue first, and then put the resin on? <laughs> you 
possibly could, and and I have with bug holes in wet wood. Super glue, super glue likes water. But again, um, Matt, your super glue doesn't like water. No, it will. Well, if it's too moist, it will bubble up. The super glue will. Yeah, but the moisture is what causes super glue to set. Super glue is the only thing you can glue wet wood together with. Yeah, that's that's true. But I think that would also same with the resin thing. It also depend on how much um, moisture is in it. And that was that was like real spongy. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was wet, wet, but yeah. um, I have done that with bug holes before, where I filled it with super glue and then resin, so that way on wet wood. Hey, well, I was I was thinking you? about just thin a, th a coat of thin super glue and then go resin on it. Thin super glue is it will seal the wood, set against mm -hmm. the moisture, and then the resin would would go against that. Not yeah, fill I, with super glue. Just put a thin coat of super, the real thin super glue. Let it soak in. And bond, and I'll give you a, a non moist <laughs> surface to bond the other two. With, with this particular piece, an issue that I had, I would use super glue because I would had to have used a ton. Um, it was rotted all the way through into the inside and almost to where I can just stick my chisel yeah. straight through it. So it was, I mean, it would have taken a lot in no. order to seal it up. Yeah. But you, you can do that like maybe on a smaller piece i don't see why not yeah well i was thinking i was thinking just the bond the area that you're going to put the resin against where it would bond to super glue that area to give it a in other words it's a it's a sealer it's mm -hmm. like a sanding you put a, you put a coat of uh primer on before you put paint on it no. it would be like putting a primer on no above what the resin's going to stick to good work it's an idea yeah. Good work, Kay. It's an experiment. Let's try it. Um, I just heard from our website director that said that the Franklin video will be on a website under the video heading of how to. So if you're looking to see that uh, Franklin video, it's there. Mr. Brown's with us tonight. Hi, sir. No, you're muted, sir. Hey. There you go. You're muted. John, you're muted. Still there, it's there come on there now. All right. Here, here's a bottle stopper. I don't know whether you can see it very good or not, but uh, it's uh, a bottle stopper on a bottle stopper. I made it there. Let's see, then it's screwed on a roof dial stopper that'll stand up. And I put uh, a cherry in the top of it. <laughs> we and showed that tonight on the preview uh, on the program. And uh, we're going to use it in our in our future newsletter and website. Okay, I made the cherry just out of wood and dyed it, and then a piece of some kind of craft wire that resembled a uh, stem on a cherry, and mixed up a bunch of epoxy and put in the the uh, inside of it, and uh, put the cherry in there and glued it in. My light isn't very good here, so but you can see what it's oh yeah kind of, but. Uh, that's one of the, the idea. Silly, things, the silly things that I do. Hey, you have to, you have to enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. And remember, folks, we're still collecting photographs of uh, the bottle stoppers. We have a bottle stopper challenge ongoing. Um, and it, there's no winner except you. Um, and it, if you turn a stopper, take a photograph, send it to us. And we will use it, newsletter, website, and on the program, the show folks. We do these challenges to get you to work on craft improvement and tool usage. Um, you see something that happens here tonight. You just saw Kim talking about putting resin, resin in a piece. You, you see that it'll kind of get things flowing for you. If you've got a bad piece, a piece of wood that's got some spots in it, but you still want that piece of wood, that might be a way to go about it. And with our members, we can share all those tips and tricks and get you in there. Um, we saw earlier in the program, I showed you some uh, ice cream scoops that Ronnie made out of two by four. Uh, and they're gorgeous. And those would be Christmas, Christmas gifts. So we're looking to get your juices flowing a little bit. Um, Eddie, Glenn Domax got a question he wants to ask Kate. So All right, Glenn, go ahead. Glenn, go ahead and chime in. Yes, the uh, Kate uh, on the on your uh, uh, wig stands. Uh, roughly, what are the dimensions? 
the 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 high the dimensions of the basically the bowls and your spindle. Basically, what about roughly what are the dimensions? Okay. Uh, yep, I have the dimensions in a text message. I can throw them in the chat, but I can verbally tell you quickly too. Um, the tops. Here, I'll just go into my shop here quick. All right. Set up my phone here. So the tops here, the top is anywhere between three to five inch diameter. Three inch diameter, four inch diameter is for children and teenagers. Um, four inch and five inch diameter is for women and men and adults, okay? The base is five to seven inch diameter blank. So this piece, the base is two inches thick. The top was two inches thick, but you have to account for the tenon that you remove afterwards. So you lose about an eighth of an inch off the top, but it can be two inches thick. The spindle is a two by two square stock and it is cut to 11 inches long. So the total overall height of your wig stand is anywhere between 13 to 15 inch uh, height. Okay, that sounds good. I think that'd be a, uh, that'd be a good challenge for our uh, uh, wood turning club. We like to do stuff for the uh, children's hospital. We turn uh, uh, decor, uh, Christmas ornaments, we've done spin tops. Uh, we do the uh, beads of courage bowls. And I think the wig stands would be a, a, a good challenge also because uh, I know uh, from experience, my, uh, uh, my wife had, uh, had passed away from cancer and she, through chemo, she used, she, uh, she was using wigs. And so uh, I think that would be, uh, I think that that would be a good challenge for us too. So, uh, and yeah, Glenn, uh, Kim just put all those dimensions on our chat. So Thanks, okay. Kim. I okay. Can get that information that well, we can save chat. I was I was writing them down real quick too. So. Okay. So, now, Kate, you but, have a write up for that, right? Yeah, I do have a write up. I actually have a PDF which has instructions on how to do it. So I could send it to Eddie, and Eddie could. Put it on the web page, put it on the Facebook page if he likes, and if he wanted, he could send it out to the membership. But I do have a detailed PDF which tells you the dimensions and pretty much how to do it. And I'm doing a complimentary free demo this Saturday, if anyone's interested. The main crucial part about the lid is you want it to be domed and a half, like a hemisphere. You don't want it to be square because when someone puts their wig stand on here to dry, it is wet. So the crown of the wig will shift and warp and stretch if you don't have a domed, a domed lid. So you have to make sure the lid has a nice curve, a nice dome that is gonna fit the crown of the wig and not alter it in any way as it dries. No, oh, okay, yeah. that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks for the info. Stepping on no down problem. the road. Thank you, thank you, folks. Uh, if you've got tip, hint, directions, or whatever, Kate sent that to us. We will include it on in our website. It may be in the next loot newsletter. Um, we can use it. We'll share it. It's all about wood turning. Uh, Anybody else up the gallery tonight? Let's see, Ron, I believe Ronald Todd has something. Let me uh, see if I can find him real quick here. He had his hand up, so I'm not sure. Okay. No, I didn't, Dane. I hit that by mistake. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. You got anything else, Dane? No, sir. Um, no, that is it. 
Okay. Uh, Joe Lesko, like I said earlier, he, he had his hand up, but I've sent him a couple messages. He, he doesn't have his video on, and I'm getting no response back on whether he's got something to show or he's having issues turning the video on or what. Um, Joe, if you're out there, speak up. A uh, little work, a little uh, explanation about what goes on here is we will talk gallery, we'll answer questions, we'll direct you to how to make wig stands, we'll talk about how to send uh, your, your freedom pens to Doug Rowe, and that's all right here. But if you have an item to show, the best way to get a hold of us is go right to chat and say, I have something to show. And Dane uh, gets it. He sorts them out. He's a co-host and he works it out. We have other guys help and gals helping every single week and you can help too. So if you got an idea, it's your wood turning club. Halfway after the hour of, of here, central time, eight, eight, eight o'clock. And if you have something to talk about, let's go. Let's see, Matt's got something. <laughs> Not, not. All right. Uh, 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 a couple people, I don't remember if it was here or some of the other places I hang out online, but people were saying you can't turn a finial out of out of two by four. Well, I was just playing around to see if I could do that and I broke it. But this was about an inch and a half longer than it is right now. So I'm convinced that you can turn a finial out of two by four. <laughs> and if you do, you're going to become a member of our what www two by four turning team we'll send you a membership card and everything that's that was that team was created by ronnie bonnet uh because he has found, discovered that you can do some wonderful things with two by four i have to agree with him you can turn some good finials out of out of two by fours i do it every day there you go i've got a finial around him we'll go try to find it's out of a two by four all right. I can hold with them. It's fun. It's turning wood and it will challenge your talents because it, it doesn't turn as easy as some products and some things we get into. And and when I say challenge your, your techniques, it'll teach you how to use your tools to do a slice instead of a plow. It'll teach you how to get more action out of some of your things. If you want to know how well your hollow works when it goes in. Find out how it works on the outside. Learn how to tool cuts and where you get the better cut. Less sanding, uh, less tear out, not as many explosions. You see, we, we're working with teaching Doug Grow how to get, get there. But but if you have the pra if you want to practice, the two by four, doesn't matter, comes in Lowe's or Home Depot. The two by four is excellent wood to work on. Um, be aware that if you try to make a bowl or a dish out of it, it does seem to follow the grain when it comes apart. So Matt will tell you, stay out of the line of fire. All right. Hey, Eddie. Yes, sir. This is Joaquin. I want to be a member of the two before team. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got something, Joaquin? Yeah, I got a, a penny. Well, I did have a two before. Um <laughs> That's yeah. nice. Very nice, Joaquin. Awesome. And that's why I teach with a uh, student turning a two before uh, instead of wasted wood and stuff. And it cuts good. I mean, yellow pine. I like the yellow pine. I don't care for the white pine because it's a uh, little bit, it stays the better, better than the white pine does. But I've been wanting to show this a couple of weeks because I want to be a member of the two before team. All right. <laughs> Your membership card right out to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, folks, we get a lot of comments and questions on our on our chat. Um, got one in from Dan. He says, any he could ask any suggestions on where to get a custom pen blank made. His co coworker was just diagnosed with colon cancer. He'd like to get a pen with a navy blue ribbon. Um, if you got a lead for him, let's talk about it. Um, and we don't do promotions of companies, but we help folks out and you can put it on the chat if you'd like to but somebody has a need for turning material not two by four and uh, if you've got it send it on to us we'd love to share it anybody hey. else in the gallery yes sir hey. spotlight me i'm getting there 
Mm-hmm. All right, let me get him. All right. Um, Whoop. You were there. Fell off. Ronnie, hold on. I got you. There you go. That's a two by four. I took I took a class from Mark Soleil. And <laughs> and he he showed how to do this, but he didn't have this piece right here on it. And I did mine and I showed it to him and he said that was the best best spot on the on the finial. So that's, <laughs> nothing, that's nothing but a two by four there. Un- to get unfinished. that finished. To get there, Ronnie, you did a slicing cut, didn't you? Yep. But that's that's unfinished. I just turned it and threw it on the side. Nice job, Ronnie. Very nice. Very nice. You, can, you can make them out of two by fours. Yep. I have a whole bucket of little two by four pieces like that, just practicing, and they get thrown off into the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> we we the same way. We I can't throw turners. wood out. We have novice turners, like and turners that wonder what I can practice on what I can turn. Um, this this afternoon riding around with the wife, I noticed about a dozen big trees in the neighborhood that are down, probably from that storm a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't like storm stressed wood, but it's had time to relax. It's, um, and if you if you get to that wood, get the small pieces. Do a do a natural ledge out of a small piece. Do something thin and and artistic out of a small piece. And when you do it with wet wood, which would do best? It moves. You do a round one and tomorrow it's going to look like a football. Um, and and that's, that's the beauty of what we do. Um, Eddie, I'll come along to the two by four club. You do? I, I definitely do. And I think if you're collecting all them little scrap pieces, try and find different ideas and different things. Because if you use them little bits of scrap, you can put them together and create something very simple sometimes. Um, I'll show my I'll show my two by four, but he's actually on a plinth. <laughs> nice. But That's realistically, cool. all that you've got there is bits that are just kind of put together. So this is nothing more than a two by four. And so is this. And these could be made out of the same if you quarter them. That's yeah. nice. What fun! Hey, so you would have a ball playing with that. Even add some strings to it. And make one of those little talking. There is, things. there is Talk so much you can do with them. So much. Great that's idea. Why that's why we're worldwide wood turners. I didn't know they had two by fours in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, not, it's we, four by twos over there. We oh, learned okay. very quickly, Eddie, that um, for some reason we need three sizes of timber. It's two by two by four. You guys all talking two by four. It can't be two by four. Timber has to have three sides. You've got to have three measurements to make it work. <laughs> we leave we leave that last measurement that's, open, that, Martin. Yeah, well, that's, last... why, that's why the turning over there is a little bit more complicated than it is over here in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, forgetting, you're forgetting one side of it. We're leaving things open for flexibility. We're letting yeah, people yeah. run with it. Yeah. yeah. We need to Donald from Australia. Donald, do you have two by fours there? Oh, we have three by twos. Three by twos, yeah, yeah, yeah. We... I use a lot of two by sixes and two by eights. Does that uh, tend to classification a little bit different, or is it still the same? No, it's definitely <laughs> different. I think that qualifies. Yeah, I got some lying around. I'm going to have to turn something and join the club, so I'll have some soon. <laughs> Well, that's that's the next challenge then, Eddie, isn't it? How, oh, how many so. pieces of two by four can people come up with that's different? Yes. I, yeah. Let's see how artistic two by fours can get. I, I'd be careful about Ronnie. Ronnie will go to Lowe's and get the good ones. <laughs> well, he will. You know, I, I I'm a Home Depot guy, but uh, Ronnie will step up and he has lately. I believe those handles he did for the uh, the ice cream scoops came from Lowe's, right, Ronnie? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Lowe's has got the nice ones. Uh, 
the the other guys there's too many knots in them <laughs> i really want to be caught in those looking through lumber trying to pick out good turning lumber in a two by four rack right we just i, I don't know the two by fours have gotten expensive right? yeah yeah well, it's even tough to find a straight one in the orange doors <laughs> yeah I didn't, I didn't even realize that there was you know better two by four wood until i started had, had scraps in the shop to turn i'm like oh this is nice this is a two by four <laughs> you, know, you know what you can't find is a four by four that's not treated right yeah, those are true well i you can get them like my orange orange store nearby has has cedar ones and i don't think they're treated but they're but you're right all the rest of them are yeah but you know cedar will splinter up on you where a two by four you can you can get a nice nice cut with a with a skew you know i do <laughs> now, so i'm assuming we're not condoning i'm assuming we're not condoning uh turning of treated wood right right uh, no Correct. I have bought I have bought uh, four by fours at Lowe's, uh, where I uh, live, uh, many times. Uh, that was the same wood species as the two by fours, and another time I got them that were they were Douglas fire, and and cut them up, and that had a, a very nice grain to it. I made some strange looking ornaments one time out of Douglas fire. I wouldn't say strange, uh, very different. Filled the wood a little bit, you know, and got it off center and twisted it a little. It turned out with a nice grain to it. If you go to home, is that untreated? Yes, untreated. I never buy treated ones. Hmm. If you go to Home Depot on Thursday, you can get uh, redwood. Oh, oh yeah. yeah but uh, one of the files is that there's about three Lowe's stores real close to where I live. And they uh, said, well, all the Lowe's stores don't have the same the same thing in them. There's right. difference in the store you get. What, uh, Dane, you said you got to go on Thursday? Yeah, I'm just making a joke. Oh, okay. I, you know, <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> I know, I know they, they blend the markets, but. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. All right. If you haven't told us where you live at so we can add you to the worldwide list. A list, you know, we just talked to Britain. We talked to Canada earlier. Donald went to Australia, just chimed in. We're all over the world, and we have a map on our website that shows where the members have identified themselves and coming from. Uh, we'd like you to hear, hear where you came from or where you're living at or where you're turning at. Just put it on in an hour. I'm sorry. Go to our website on the contact website and put it there or right here on the chat, because that's where David will pick it up from and put it in there. And again, the article we had about the wig stands and Freedom Pens, all that will be on our website where you can have it. It's quarter to the hour. Any other items or topics this evening? I think I saw someone has something in the chat to show a spinning top stand or something out of a Dubai 4. And then I have uh, one last thing. Well, you're on. Come on, Dave. Okay. Um, these are a pair of, I have a friend, well, I have a couple of friends who train in martial arts and Kali sticks and Japanese fighting sticks. So they wanted me to create them two Morningstar type fighting sticks. Um, so these are for training and home security. Uh, v cuts in the handle for grip, a uh, little eyelet for a lanyard. So if it gets knocked out of your hand, it stays on your wrist. These are made out of ash. And up here is sort of a morning star type uh, look to it. Sharp edges with recesses that could do some damage. But also I did some feathering just to practice wood burning. So that's one. And then there is another one, which is really the, the uh, damage culprit. I mean, they, they'll both do damage, but this one would probably do a lot more damage. The head on this piece is square. And what I did was I tried several different wood burning techniques. So on the top here, 
we have stars because you're you'll be seeing stars. <laughs> Here I have striped lines that follow the grain pattern. Here I have a little bubble or stone type uh, pattern. Here I have some stippling on the bottom and top and then flames coming from heaven and hell or from above and below. And then over here I have sort of a turtle shell type uh, pattern. Um, these are also made with ash, have the lanyard so it won't fall off your wrist. And you can use them both in, uh, in conjunction with one another. So, John. fun project. <clears throat> How'd you turn the square part of it? <laughs> I, I started with square stock. I left the top of the head square and I cut down this surface with a skew, cut this surface with a skew, shape the rest of the handle with the skew and V cuts for grip. Those are sweet, same, Cade. Same tool. I used a skew all the way through this. Yep, great practice for your skew, spindle turning, beads, coves, V cuts, uh, and play with it. Do some wood burning, some embellishment. Practice on something before you try to do that really fancy artistic piece. It'll will it will turn out better if you practice first. Right. Good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And did we have somebody? Oh, there's Gerald. I knew he had an item. Gerald, you're up, sir. No, the other Gerald. Yes. Gerald in Winter Haven. The other Gerald. Oh. Avery? Right. Yeah. Okay. Where's there he is. That's two by four also. I had that for a two by four contest a couple years ago. It's a spinning top. I threaded the top, eight threads per inch. And so you can hide a necklace in it. Is that your Mardi Gras beads? Hey, that's what it is, but they're from Gasparilla in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> and all that fits inside because it's hollow. Oh, oh nice. bring that bring the piece back. That's nice. Yeah. Did you earn those beads? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a story there. I'm just yeah. saying. I don't want Doug involved. <laughs> he wants to know too much. Chuck, you're on deck, buddy. Uh, I got I got something real special for you guys and girls. Right, does anybody know what this is? Palette. Palette. No, it's it's uh it's done it for banding. it's banding wood. Yeah, like at Home Depot and Lowe's will give you this. They all, all their fence, the like the dog ear fence and the uh, uh, privacy fence. They put this on it flat and they run the band through it so they don't ruin the edges. I get a lot of it from work because we do a lot of metal buildings, and uh, some of it's thicker. I got some that was oak. Usually it's this uh, white pine or yellow pine. This one was just laying out front. I went and grabbed it. But um, yeah, if you run into the box stores, usually they got this stuff in the back. They'll let you have it. And it's basically the same thing as two box stores. Like some of them snowmen I showed you, they're, they're turned out of this. Um, I just do like little odds and ends stuff to practice. You work with it. But if you want to make it round, uh, what I usually do is I try to find my square without getting them in it. Because if you do it like that, if you go at the center right there, you always end up with a flat side. Which ones looks cool, like one of my snowmen. But uh, yeah, I know two by fours are getting expensive. And uh, this is a pretty long one. This is a- You get the wrong guy highlighted. A four footer. But uh, yeah, if you go into box stores, they'll, they'll usually give you the back in like a trash can, back by the stall. Just a- it's an option. Little salt, salt and fried you in case you don't have money on two by fours just to practice. If sure. you know any factories no in your area that bring stuff in on skids, they're usually made out of hardwood skids. They usually throw it out back in the bin and they allow people to come and pick it up as they see fit. So that's another avenue to get free hardwood or skid wood or two by four type wood. 
Yeah, and then I heard people talking about Royal King. Uh, Royal King, I know here in Tennessee, they have like when their pallets and stuff to get busted up or like uh, packaging crates and stuff. They usually have like a free wood pile out back too, where you can go grab. Uh, you know, it's a little busted up, but you know, some of it. You know, if you find a piece that big, you can make something out of it. Yeah, it's just free free lumber for turning and practicing. So. But that's your right. local cabinet that. shop. Well, I, make, I make a lot of I make a lot of shop jigs. I make arms to hold cameras and arms to hold lights and th and so on. So all of that stuff that I can get for free just means I can add stuff to my to my shop too. So yeah, dumpster yeah, diving thing. works to, in, in this world. Yeah, you got the pallet wood and stuff, and then uh, you, know, you got special pry bars that take the wood off. And I just I just got a uh, an air tool that allows you to shoot the nails out. Uh, to the point where you can just grab them with a a, a claw hammer then um and it was like 55 bucks on on the you know so like can't wait to try that and even if the nails are cut off if you use a saw to cut them off there's still a little bit you can use this nail or uh, unnailer they hit it from the back so the head will get there you can pull it out sweet nice idea hey that would be a cool tool to, to show us because i've I've always just done it with the hammer and the punch. Now I'll tear the, the pallet apart with my reciprocating saw and then use the hammer and a punch to knock those nails out backwards and pull them out. But I'd like to see that air tool that you're talking about. Yeah, yep. that sounds cool. I've never seen one either. Yeah. And remember, oh, folks, we're all looking for good ideas. You come across something that you want to share here. Right. 10 minutes to 40 hour folks uh, will continue on if you got something to chat about otherwise we're going to wrap it up in a minute um and we got the chuck I'm, I'm looking through the chat right now to see who we who we got or missed or whatever and remember if you want to save the chat go to the little square with the three dots in it next to chat or in the lower right hand corner and click save chat and then you'll have it referred to it'll be saved on your computer but if you miss, we have the world's greatest IT director and webmaster, and he will put that on our website. That's the same place we put the videos, the photographs, the tips, the hints, and all that. We're building the finest free website for wood turning. And that's it. No commercials. None at all. Anybody else up this evening? Yeah, here's the, uh, the unlock. It's called Airlocker, this particular model. And... Uh... Like I said, I think this was like $55. The only reason I got this one is it has a spare, um, uh, the spare rod in, inside it comes with it. So and I think it was like 55 bucks. So, but there's a couple variations of them and you go nuts on them, but uh, the reviews are pretty good on it. So I thought, ah, 55 bucks, can't wait to play with it. Um, I'm... We might be looking for a demonstration there. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else up tonight? I think that's it. All right. Well, folks, it's been interesting. Uh, I will see you again next weekend or next week, next Wednesday night. Um, and we'll be talking wood turning, and you are all invited to be there. And when I say I'll see you next week, I'm getting the what is it? Cataract removed tomorrow. So, hey, I can really be able to see. For now, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. The Jewel Wood Turning Club. I look forward to seeing you back again next week. And if you got something to add, subtract, whatever, send it to us an email, worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com or put it on our website, worldwidewoodturners.org. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and for my entire advisory team, which could include you or does include you, I want to thank you for it. And please, this week when you're turning, peace. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. Good thanks night. a lot for thanks a lot for having me, everybody. Uh, Good night, everyone. All the positive support. Thanks, everybody. Great.